Florida Sports Broadcasting is proud to bring you the Clay County Football Game of the Week. Tonight, it's Fleming Island taking on Oak Leaf. Live from Oak Leaf High School. Tonight's game is being brought to you by the Clay County Tourism Department. Mr. Chubby's Wings. The First Baptist Church of Orange Park. New Teeth Now. The RCC Church. And the United Soccer Alliance. We welcome you again once to Friday Night Lights here on FSB. From the campus at Oak Leaf High School here in Clay County, we bring you tonight's Game of the Week and the start of district play for the Fleming Island Golden Eagles and the Oak Leaf Knights. BP here along with my partner David Wells, and it's been two weeks since we've been on the broadcast, but we've had some exciting ball games on FSB to keep us locked into the season. Last time out, the Golden Eagles had to pencil in an opponent and then inked a significant victory against the Eagles of North Florida Educational Institute. 42 to 6 before having last week off. Meanwhile, Oakleaf has been away from competition since August 25th with a shutout win over Orange Park, 42 nothing. Will that lag time be a factor in tonight's contest? We'll find out as we kick off week four of high school football here on FSB. David, it's so good to be back with you here again tonight. A lot of media attention on this evening's ball game. I see First Coast News is here. I saw Action News Jacks. They've now um, uh, mocked this, the game of the week. This is the Clay County game of the week for the Clay County Athletic Department. So much attention on this opening district game tonight. Absolutely, and the Jaguars called this their prep game of the week as well. There's plenty of folks here representing uh, the Duval when they play uh, Kansas City this, this weekend. Uh, heard that Shaq Quarterman, the linebacker for uh, the Jaguars right now, is going to be here at this game too. So a nice atmosphere, but it's going to be really difficult, especially for Oak Leaf, to come back after not having played football since August 25th. Uh, you'd have to expect them to uh, get a little antsy and a little riled up. Some trickeration to keep the boys involved might be coming. Uh, but all I think is they have to start over in this game like it's week one. Like they just came off of the spring game, which was their uh, their opener. Take a big old break. That's their summer. And they're back for week one for real tonight against Fleming Island. And you can say that was almost their spring game, the way they handled Orange Park. And then the Raiders get into a track meet last week with Clay. That was an exciting finish here on FSB. So, And if you didn't uh, catch that, you can catch it on our YouTube channel for sure. So big district matchup tonight. Fleming Island winless last year in the district. They're hungry for a victory. Oakleaf wants to keep the pride alive. They did, they did really well last year against this Fleming Island team in a great ball game. Of course, we're going to break down the X's and O's and whatnot for you on the pregame show tonight. But just in the atmosphere tonight, they call this place the castle. So we have the rock over at Fleming Island and the castle here tonight. And the student section's the dungeon. And the student section's the dungeon, yes. We're in Eagle Band 1's here tonight from Fleming Island. I hear they're going to play at halftime. So it, it's going to be a wonderful game. Clay County is here tonight. Lots of people in the stands piling in a little early. Got about 15 minutes before kickoff. And I tell you what, with that said, we have plenty more to talk about as we catch up from two weeks off. But let's catch our breath and take time out for a commercial message. This is Friday Night Lights on FSB, and we have more pregame coverage right after this. Florida Sports Broadcasting is your home for live local sports in Florida. Florida Sports Broadcasting covers sports year-round and brings you the action live with play-by-play -play so you don't miss a moment of the action. Broaden gets the snap, steps, Go it again. he's going to throw it again. it again. He's got a receiver, that's going to be a penalty. Oh, they hit a Fleming Island touchdown! touchdown! It's a touchdown! 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 Make sure you like FSB on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. And for more information, go to floridasportsbroadcasting.com. Welcome back to our pregame coverage of tonight's matchup between Fleming Island and Oakleaf, the Clay County Game of the Week here on FSB. BP and David Wells on the call tonight. We've settled in after a bit of a break. We want to thank our teammates Mike and James Critch for covering a pair of games, including an exciting finish between Clay and Orange Park. If you didn't catch that, you should be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and find replays of our live broadcasts. It's time now for our visitor's view brought to you by the Clay County Tourism Department. Enjoy the natural beauty of Florida's first coast, Clay County style, by visiting Explore Clay 
Highway17.com. Tonight, the boys from Up Highway 17 are the road team, and they're off to a 2-0 start under new head coach Chad Parker. This Fleming Island team is looking to notch their first victory in district play as they went winless last season, and the campaign begins on the road tonight at Oakleaf. They're also looking to avenge a close loss to these nights that with a few more big plays and fewer penalties may have gone the other way. The Golden Eagles have put up an average of 41 points in just two games, but they face some less than stiff competition and do come off a bye week. Quarterback Sebastian Broughton has been raising his stock as a mobile quarterback, showed off his speed last week with a 69-yard TD run on a scramble against NEFI and threw a couple of touchdown passes in a blowout. So, Dave, what do you think he needs to do this week against an Oak Leaf defense that has so far pitched a shutout and kind of looks a little bigger than advertised? Getting the ball out of his hand. There are two senior defensive linemen for Oak Leaf that are incredibly productive. Uh, that'd be number nine, uh, Justin uh, Marshman C, and then also number 18, we got Courtney Robinson. Those two guys had two sacks in their first game, although that does seem like an eternity ago. They are chomping at the bit to go get him tonight. So if he can get the ball out of his hands quickly, make accurate and, uh, accurate and uh, efficient passes that allow for run-after-catch opportunities uh, for both Beverly and for Boykin, if he can do that, then he's probably going to be successful early in this game. On the other side of that, and speaking of, the other X-Factors on this team are in the backfield and at wide receiver with that exciting combination of Tyler Beverly and Demir Jackson at tailback plus Fleming Island's own legion of Zoom, as you will, for Trace Burney and Devon Boykin. And by the way, he had a spectacular kick return that almost went the distance last week. So what are you looking for out of the Golden Eagles skill players tonight? Well, balance, being able to run the football, uh, having a, uh, that quick passing game be efficient early and often. If they can take short passes like screen plays and, uh, and bubble screens out and make it like instead of being four-yard gains, five-yard gains, burst them into a big play, that's what the Golden Eagles are going to need because time to throw the ball is going to be at a premium. Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to get into the Oak Leaf defense a little bit later on in our pregame coverage here. But I saw that last week these guys were a pretty dominant force against an, Oak Leaf, uh, an Orange Park team that is still a little bit of a rebuild, but they're playing with some sass, and they really you know, turned out a good game against Clay last week, so you really can't hold that against them. First game of the season, you're always going to have some jitters. But for these guys, the jitters have been sitting there for two whole weeks. I mean, you know, what, what, do you, what is your mindset right now if you're Fleming Island? You've only had one week off. These guys have almost had a month off. Well, one week off helps you get rid of all the bumps and bruises, the hamstrings, the ankles, anything that you might have had lingering from a, a game or a, a real tough practice has plenty of time to heal and rejuvenate. Two weeks off is a bit too much. Two weeks off, that's a long time. Going on three weeks, that's way too much time. you got to keep your kids engaged. Uh, I would suggest in that portion putting in some trick plays, finding ways to engage the kids. Throw a guy on a whiteboard. Maybe your senior quarterback has a, a thing for the expo marker, and he can uh, – draw something up cool and help uh, spark that offense for Oak Leaf. The Oak Leaf Knights gathered in a corner for their pregame huddle. Fleming Island off to the side doing their thing. And I tell you what, this Golden Eagle team has had an extra week to prepare for Oak Leaf. When we come back, we'll talk about the Knights and see how they stack up against their district rivals. You're watching Friday Night Lights on FSB, and we'll be back right after this. Mr. Chubby's Wings are more than just wings with a great food and beverage selection. Mr. Chubby's is the home of the original Fleming Island Happy Hour, Monday through Friday, 4 to 7 p.m. And you can catch all your favorite sporting events on the numerous TVs, including all Fleming Island football games on FSB. Before or after the game, Mr. Chubby's has you covered, and they're only eight-tenths of a mile from the Fleming Island High School campus. You can order online at MrChubby'sWings.com or call 904-272-WINGS. And while you're at it, let Mr. Chubby's cater your next event. Call 904-272-WING. Back here at Oakleaf High School for Friday Night Lights on FSB. I like how that sounds. I think we should use it a little more. Alongside David Wells and our entire FSB crew, producer Cobus Gomes to my right, director Ray Canaveri fluttering around doing what he does best. I'm BP and we're happy to be with you for this evening of week four of the high school football season. David, we're in week four already. Can you believe that it's mid-September? You the, blink and it just goes by. The temperature is dropping outside. There's a nice breeze out here at Oakleaf today. It looks Fantastic. This is our first time here at Oakleaf High. So, you know, great facility here. The uh, parking lot over to my right is filling up. They have the NGRTC cadets out and backing everybody in. So just to get you an atmosphere check tonight, as you can see around here, we have the officials gathered up at midfield right now having their opening conversation. Um, this is the game in Clay County and in uh, northwestern, well, western Jacksonville at least, because we're just a stone's throw across the line here. 
Now let's dive into those homestanding Oak Leaf Knights in our home team breakdown brought to you by Altair Integrated Services. For all your IT talent acquisition solutions, head over to Altair Tech, that's T-E-K, dot com. The Knights have been on an unplanned vacation as a September 1st game with Baker didn't proceed as planned. Thank you, Hurricane Adelia. With plenty of rest and an eye on this Fleming Island team, the Knights are looking to start their district play with a victory over another Clay County rival. Last year was a close game between these two teams with Oak Leek finishing off the Eagles 26-20. to and That was a heartbreaker at the Rock. Oak Leaf is led on offense by their senior quarterback, Brandon Wallace. And last season, Brandon saw limited action behind quarterback Drew Ammon, who was not only a quality player behind center, he was a place kicker. <laughs> oh, oh he had a mullet. He had accuracy. <laughs> he had legs to him. That guy could do it all. Oh, oh, by the way, but now with the offense firmly in Wallace's control and with a game under his belt, Dave, what's he going to need to do against this Fleming Island defense after going 11 of 13 for 162 and three touchdowns last week? 84% completion percentage. He also added two touchdowns with his legs in that game as well. So he was incredibly productive, but Fleming Island's going to know. Fleming Island is going to key in on him, He's how the offense runs, uh, whether it's rushing the ball with him, whether it's trying to distribute through it. You have to get to the quarterback early and often. Uh, Fleming Island played a little bit more conservative brand of defense, a lot more relying on their front four to generate pressure. And they have a lot of talent on that defensive line, you know, whether it's Van Hess or whether it's uh, my guy uh, Newman, you know. Yeah. As long as those two can produce some pressure in the middle, then they're going to be pretty successful. But you have to try and generate pressure if that doesn't work. Absolutely. Defense made an early statement for the Knights, and they were led by senior linebacker Neil White, who had six solo tackles and 12 total against Orange Park in that shutout victory. Defense also had five sacks against the Raiders with Justin Marsh, Mency, Courtney Robinson, and Anthony Smith all contributing to that backfield pressure. With that kind of production early in the season, Dave, what will Oakleaf have to do tonight to keep Sebastian Broughton on his toes and the running backs behind the line of scrimmage? Not allowing the vertical scramble. When you take two defensive ends and you rush around the arc, you allow opportunities in between tackle and guard for your quarterback to escape, especially to step up into the pocket, take one more peek downfield and run. And that's what Sebastian Broughton's very good at. If you can allow him to stay within that pocket and then have to bounce to the outside, he's less effective throwing on the run. Absolutely. So, and so their goal tonight is pretty much to bury the worm, as it were, and keep him underground. Bury the worm. Bury the worm. I'm sure, to, I'm sure that was on a chalkboard somewhere this week at Oakley Fly. Well, we're getting closer to kickoff here, just about eight and change here on the uh, official clock here. When we come back, we'll have our keys to the game and get fired up for this huge district matchup here in Orange Park. You're watching Friday Night Lights on FSB, and we'll be back in just a moment. The Baptist Church of Orange Park was founded in 1921. Suffice to say, much has changed in Orange Park, Clay County, and the world since then. Though much has changed in the world, our mission remains the same. We are a church intent on fulfilling that mission and are strategically engaged in our community through partnerships with local schools, sports teams, veterans organizations, and more. We are a family equipping church. We invite you to check us out at firstfam.org or join us in person at 1140 Kingsley Avenue, Orange Park, Florida. You're watching Friday Night Lights on FSB. We're so glad that you're with us here tonight here at Oakleaf High School. And we want to remind you that you can find this game on floridasportsbroadcasting.com if you're not already watching it on YouTube. But you can follow us on social media. Find us on Facebook under Florida Sports Broadcasting, on X, which everybody's calling formerly Twitter. It kind of sounds like we're dealing with Prince all over again, the artist formerly known as. But you can find us on X at FSB Jacks and on Instagram at Florida Sports Broadcasting. Now it's time for our keys to the game, presented by our favorite place in Clay County, Mr. Chubby's. Oh, the best. The key to a great pregame or postgame celebration is at Mr. Chubby's, the home of the original Fleming Island Happy Hour, and our favorite place to unwind after a broadcast here on FSB, not gonna lie. So Dave, I'm gonna let you start off here tonight. What are your keys to the game for the Fleming Island Golden Eagles? They're a road team tonight in a hostile environment, first district game of the season. You didn't do so well last year. What do you got to do to make it into the win column tonight? You know, after taking a moment to study how big the uh, Oakley defense is and how much size they have in it, it's going to be very difficult to run the ball. So my key to the game is to stop these pass rushers, distribute the ball quickly, but then get the ball to those guys to make big plays and throw, throw, throw often. 
Uh, I have a, my senior quote was, you know, you'll always win the game if you score more points than the other team. <laughs> so that's a situation that I think that Fleming Island's in right now. They're going to have to win this game, and it might even be kind of a shootout. So you think we're, we're dealing with a track meet tonight for sure? Well, it just depends on how well the uh, Fleming Island offensive line is able to contain these two edge rushers. Yeah, well, and, and I agree with that sentiment. So my keys for Fleming Island, run the ball and keep that offense or defense um, tired and keep the Oak Leaf offense on the sidelines. The longer you can extend drives tonight, move the sticks, and I'll get to my other parts in a, pen in a minute with penalties. You know, you've got to keep the drive alive the entire time. First and 10, do it again. No bonehead penalties tonight. You can't have any bonehead penalties if you're Fleming Island. That's procedure penalties, and that's also penalties of emotion. They have to keep their emotions in check tonight and win the game this evening between the whistles. They have to stay within the whistles and keep all of that emotion bottled up in between each play. So with that said, David, what does Oakleaf need to do tonight to beat this uh, red-hot Golden Eagle team with a high-powered offense? Well, preventing the long scrambles from Sebastian Broughton, especially when he uh, steps up into the pocket. Uh, along those lines as well, if they can force them to uh, have to run the ball, maybe you play two deep safeties and take away that big play, you're going to start to limit what they can do on offense. If you limit what they do on offense, they get one-dimensional and they make mistakes. Uh, another thing I have for them is to test the deep ball uh, in the deep area of the field. If they can throw the ball down the field, last year Fleming Island gave up plenty of passes in the deeper area of the field. They had poor safety play, and they returned nobody from that secondary as well. So they've got inexperienced players, and if you can throw the ball deeper down the field, you might be successful in that area. Absolutely. Well, I think Oakleaf needs tonight, and I said it earlier, they need to bury the worm. Bury the worm in the backfield and not let him create plays. One thing that Sebastian Broughton is very good at doing is creating those plays on the fly. He did it last week, turned a pass play that could have been a pass play into a 69-yard run for a touchdown. The guy's got wheels. So his ability to improvise is going to be Fleming Island's bane, or, or, or boon, but Oakley's bane if they don't turn it around and keep him in the backfield. You also have to keep those talented running backs in the backfield too. Try not to get the offensive line, get the push that they have been getting, because once Demir Jackson starts striking thunder, lightning is coming a little bit later on. See, that's the one part I disagree with you. I think you need to step on the gas from get-go. Like, this game might end up being 30-something, 30-something, 40-something, 40-something. Mm. You need to score points early and often. I, I see, but I think I think they need to set it up and, and pound away and wear these kids out. You need, uh, Oakleaf needs to match speed with scheme tonight. They need to play in their positions you know, if you're in zone, you're in zone. If you're man, head on a hat. you got to stay assignment football when it's called for. But you need to keep the wide receivers off the schedule because if Trace Bernie gets downfield, forget about it as soon as the ball's in his hands. And what about Devon Boykin? Devon Boykin's made some fantastic plays early in the season. If you're not paying attention to where he's going, he's gone. It's too late. And Sebastian Broughton's been great at finding broken coverages. Like you said, if you're playing zone coverage, being able to take your deep third and stay in your deep third and not getting distracted by possible crossers and eye candy because he has the arm the anticipation, and the talent out there at wide receiver to hit those big plays. Yeah, and, and, and if you're schemed for it, you might want to put a spy on him, too, just to make sure he stays in his lane. How many guys you got? How many, yeah, how many guys you got? How many dogs you got on the field tonight? And last for you, Oakleaf, you got to keep your emotions in check. This is a heated county rivalry, even though it's not as heated as Clay Fleming or maybe Clay Orange Park. But honestly speaking, you got to keep the emotions in check tonight and win between the whistles, just like Fleming Island needs to do. Well, let's take one last break as we get the flags to come out. The national anthem will be sung. When we come back, it's time for kickoff here in Oakleaf. You're watching Friday Night Lights on FSB, and we'll return in just a moment. Through their strategic IT talent placement practice, Altier Integrated Services leverages their top-tier network and proven talent acquisition process to efficiently support your organization by augmenting its talent resources. Altier provides institutions the talent to achieve competitive advantages through digital transformation and modernization. IT executives are faced with continued challenges around cost optimization and innovative activities. Altier has a proven track record of providing services anchored in driving the agile IT enterprise of the future. For more information about Altier Integrated Services, go to altairtek.com. Welcome back to Oakleaf High School. BP along with David Wells. And we're getting ready to get this thing started. Captains at the midfield here, the corn toss. And we'll, uh, we'll stay here and watch it. So, Dave, it's been two weeks. 
uh, we've been chomping at the bit to get to a I ball missed game you, buddy. here. Yeah. I, I sh you know what? And we kind of came out swinging tonight. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> I really like it. Well, we hope you're already tuned in and fired up for this broadcast this evening. And we want to thank you so much for watching us here on Florida Sports Broadcasting. It is our pleasure to cover North Florida athletics, specifically in Clay County. And we appreciate all of you watching across the country this evening and if you have a relative here a, a son or a nephew or cousin or somebody here that's watching tonight uh, please make sure you spread the word to the rest of the family and you can catch these games here in the area it's already been an exciting season uh, here in Clay County nonetheless so that Clay Orange Park game last week I tell you what Mike and James did a really good job keeping it in their seats last week um, and uh, at that beautiful facility at Orange Park High School now Hoyt B. Cottony Stadium so Fleming Island has won the toss, and they will defer to the second half. So Oakleaf will start on offense. Oakleaf clad in all white tonight. Fleming Island in their solid green. And I understand that the Fleming Island Golden Eagles, for the first time, uh, have uh, helmet decals. They have the Golden Eagle helmet decals. Oh, I like it. Yes. I like it. They're in the white out for Oakleaf, and we have the new decals for, uh, for Fleming Island. So, you know, it's nice to be dressed to the nines for the uh, game yeah. of the week. All, all of these shiny things here, and I, so we got paperwork flying around. Let's see some, some more rosters, and uh, we're ready to go here on Florida Sports Broadcasting. So glad you're joining us here tonight. Kovas Gomes keeping us in order here. Ray Canaveri doing his best to keep things tuned in, and we appreciate all that these guys are doing. Our great camera crew tonight already giving you some pretty good shots of this evening's contest. So we would assume that uh, we're going to see Brandon Wallace start at quarterback and Sebastian Broughton on the other side for Fleming Island. I tell you what, let's take a quick commercial real uh, fast. Let's get the colors presented in the national anthem song, and when we come back, it's time to put toe to leather here on FSB. We'll be back in just a minute. A beautiful rendition of the Star Spangled Banner by the Oakleaf High School Band. Wonderfully done. Going to be seeing the uh, Fleming Island Band at the half here. And thanks to the Golden Regiment of Oakleaf High School, NJROTC unit. I'm a proud NJROTC grad myself. I can't believe it. I just thought about this a couple of weeks ago. It's been 25 years since I did anything like that. I'm old. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> we all grow up in different ways, but I didn't realize you're 25 years out, man. Yeah, you, you wear it well. You wear it well. I have my mama's face. That's, that's for sure. Good to be good to be with you in the booth, partner. <laughs> two weeks is far too long. 
But anyway, uh, a, a great matchup tonight, guys. And if you're just tuning in, uh, we thank you for stopping by. Here comes the Fleming Island Golden Eagles. Backflips and all. That was a 6'5 dude doing a backflip. That was a long jump. That's a 6'5 sophomore doing a backflip. That's impressive. That that was rather long. I just yeah, that, I've never seen a tall person do. I'm gonna call my buddies about that guy. He's gonna play more. Yeah, I want. <laughs> that's crazy. And here come the Oak Leaf Gold. Oh, that's almost said Golden Knights. And here we have another backflip. This must be a thing in Clay County. All the uh, backflips that they do. They got an impressive mascot. Uh, he looks like Nitro from UCF, actually. But uh, that 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 outfit has got to be sweltering. That's, that's why. Oh, absolutely. I, well, I'm glad I'm glad to watch that in mid September and not August. <laughs> well, I'm so excited for this one. It's the uh, Clay County game of the week. It's the FSB game of the week. We got the Jaguar game of the week. The crowd is absolutely bonkers. Wide out versus all green look for uh, the Golden Eagles. It, this is going to be fantastic. Uh, I, Sebastian Broughton is ready to play here. He's uh, coming off a great week, a bye week. So everything in the bag comes out tonight. Let's do this. Who needs Deion Sanders when you've got all the action right here in your backyard? Oh, shades on, man. Shades on. I, my, I wear my sunglasses tonight. That's true. Shoeless Joe Anderson, that was you. The Easter eggs will be coming tonight. My friends watch this game and wait for me to make a goofy reference. There it is. <laughs> I can't wait to see this. Been waiting far too long. Parker Sertivan. Fleming Island's place kicker will come out and put toe to leather, and we will get started here. So one of those kids doing backflip was the true freshman, Michael Connor. He led the team in receiving yards and touchdowns in week one. So uh, an athletic kid, a young kid, and back there to return this kick. Yep. So we're ready to uh, see him uh, take off here. Got a, looks like we're fixing some... Uh, Pants length there. Got to have your pants. Yeah, you, the you knees. can't have the jersey rolled up into the under pads. You can't have uh, your midsection showing. You just got to get adjusted and get ready to play. Also back deep, number 13, Jackie Shepard, sophomore. They have him listed as a wideout and a defensive back, so he may play on two sides of the ball. If you're not familiar with the rules of high school football, we start the ball on the 40 yard line for kickoffs, and that sails over the end zone. It'll be a touchback right away. Sertivan kicks, and we have a little line drive base hit. That'll get picked up by an up back, bobbled at about the 30-yard line, and he'll get just shy of the 35-yard line, and that's where Oakleaf will start out on offense tonight. I'm a fan of the squib kick. I'm a fan of the squib kick. Uh, Fleming Island has had trouble with, uh, with uh, kickoff coverage for the last two seasons that we've covered them, so as long as you're getting the ball into somebody who's not supposed to have it and your return team gets there even faster, you're preventing a big play. I like it a lot. Absolutely. And coming out, the senior quarterback, Brandon Wallace. Wallace is a dual threat quarterback. He has the ability to run with power and also to throw the ball to the sidelines. He had three passing touchdowns in his first game uh, to go along with two rushing uh, touchdowns as well. We'll line up at the 34 yard line and that's where they'll scrimmage. Well, so four wide receiver spread system. They're going to try to run the ball uh, in between the tackles quite a bit and distribute the ball out to their slot receivers. Yeah, they definitely do spread it way wide out there. They extend the field quite a bit. On the uh, near side, you have number 88, Malachi Wharton. And he is sitting right at the numbers. And that exciting freshman, number eight, Michael Connor, in the slot to the bottom. He'll go one-on-one -on -one with Josh Murray on the defensive side of the ball. And here we go. Just underway here at Oakleaf High. Snap the give, and that's a nice cut. And he'll get down after about a five, maybe six-yard gain. They're going to send receivers in fly motion and run the ball up the middle. Might get some more even misdirection off of that, the fake to the run and the quarterback. So it's going to be a lot of things up the middle with some eye candy to the outside. It's junior running back Christopher Foy on the carry. We'll call it a six-yard game. Second and four. And we'll spread the field one more time. Wallace will have a shotgun and a sidecar. Stack receivers, and they're going to move across the formation now, coming to the backfield. Takes a snap, does that read again. That's another carry, a nice skip and a move. Defensive pressure caught, and number 12, and I don't see. It's Jackie Shepard. He's actually listed as number 13 on the roster, but there he is. 
So a change to the Fleming Island defense. It looks like we have Boykin playing both offense and defense. He's going to be their starting uh, nickel corner, uh, usually lined up in the slot. So they are very well aware that they have great slot receivers. Again, not uncommon to have that Ironman set up here in high school football. You put your athletes where they need to play. Oakleaf will come out third in about a yard. Wallace will clap, try to sit uh, Fleming Island Whoa. to move, and that was way a, to hold your water. That was a deep breath on that play. Four wide receivers now for the Oakleaf offense. Wallace alone in the backfield. He'll take it himself, go straight up the middle, and that'll be a first down, just shy of midfield. They're going to spot him right at the 50. First and 10, Oakleaf. This kid Rogers has such good get off. Number 14 for Fleming Island. He's able to like quickly come off the ball and bend. He should be really a passing down situations kind of defensive end. But man, can he get off the ball. Nice. Nicely done by Oakleaf to move the sticks. 50 yards to go here before pay dirt, but first and 10 right now. Oakleaf will come out in a three wide receiver set. Got to have a big game here from number 40, Nate Van Hoff. He's to the bottom of the screen with the uh, black elbow tape. Eagles lining up, showing pressure. They're going to get it. They're going to kind of run blitz on that one, but the blocking was very good by the Oak Leaf offense. And Foy will get another carry of about seven yards. They are flying upfield, and uh, Oak Leaf is taking advantage of that with some quick hitters. If you fly upfield, you're able to be run behind, and that's exactly what happened there. Knights go tempo on this, and they'll snap on second down. Quick fake over the middle. That is tipped and incomplete and a great defensive play. Got a big old paw on that one to keep that one from being a slant and go. That could have turned into a touchdown. I think that was number six, uh, Aaron Witt, the linebacker, who got a hand on that. So impressive play, nice reactionary quickness. Uh, stick a hand up there and disrupt the passing lane. Third down and about two and a half. Ball just outside the Fleming Island 40-yard line. Spotted down to the 42. Oakleaf converted on their first third down attempt. Now, Oakleaf looks like they have a significant size advantage against the uh, Fleming Island defensive line, so don't, don't expect them to go away from this run game. Tighten the formation up just a little bit here. They'll get a snap. Wallace gives. Foy will pound it in, and he will get across that 40-yard line, get just shy of the 35. It'll be another Oakleaf first down. Now, you're just waiting for Fleming Island to have to adjust their defensive set. They've been keeping uh, two safeties deep, and you're eventually going to have to roll one into the box to be able to keep up with this run game. Absolutely. The numbers are going to have to be in your favor. Yep. See if they can maybe lull them to sleep here. Maybe throw something over the top, which has been the Achilles heel of this Golden Eagle defense. First down and 10 at the 36-yard line of Fleming Island. And they'll continue to run that three wide receiver set. They'll put Neil White, that talented linebacker, and he'll kind of line up at a tight end slot. Wallace gets the snap. Steps back, he'll throw, and that is going to be incomplete Whoa, and a great close. defensive play by number three. No, two, Actually, number Caleb two, Singleton. Caleb Singleton. I'm sorry, I can't see from that distance. Yeah, Caleb Singleton, and uh, we all remember his big brother. Well, he's, he's making a name for himself. I know his big brother's at Florida State right now, but he is an impressive athlete, a sprinter, and uh, a future Division I football player in his own right. So. Single, Singleton family creates some athletes now, that, that's that for sure. True. That is true for sure. And Definitely some track stars. Two weeks ago, he traveled with the number one receiver. Now it looks like he's just going to man aside. Yes. So they'll go double sidecar on second down and 10 after the incompletion. Wallace takes the snap. He'll give and take it himself. Calls his own number on the read, and he'll get tackled. And a pretty good pursuit right there by number six, Arian Witt, who gets uh, Wallace wrapped up before he could do any more damage. About a four-yard gain. Yeah, second play we've called his name already in this game. You know, an impressive junior, first-year starter for the uh, Golden Eagles. Uh, if he can continue to hit the quarterback like that, this is going to be a good game for the Eagles. Ball sits at the 31-yard line after a five-yard gain. Third down again. Oakleaf has been living and breathing on third down in this opening drive. 8.26 and counting to go. One thing I didn't see from their kicker and warm-ups was a long-range field goal, so I, I don't know if they're going to be able to make one from this far out. See if Fleming Island can get the stop here on third and manageable for Oakleaf, Ooh, and that's going to get backed up, and that is not what you want to see on a third and manageable. And I think that was probably going to be a run play, too, because he wasn't even coming close to looking back for that ball. He was just going to run off the corner. Yeah, he was definitely setting up to block downfield for that one. So that brings it up to third and 10 right now. Ball backed up to the 36-yard line. Well, if I'm a wide receiver and I have a guy like Singleton sitting across from me, I don't really want to block him. I want to take off to the outside, get him to turn his back to the ball, and make it so he's, not, he's out of the play. Yeah, pretty much. Stops the clock with 8.12 to go here in the first quarter. No score. Takes a snap. Wallace pressured. 
throws over the middle and will bounce that off the foot of his, foot of his receiver, and that's incomplete, and this is the first fourth down for the Oak Leaf offense tonight. Fleming Island standing tall on that pass play. Generating pressure, key to this game for the Golden Eagles. Uh, if they can do it with four, excellent, but they manufacture a little pressure there, send an extra person, and that really helps get to the quarterback. So fourth down, it looks like the offense is going to stay on the field. Again, high school football, the kicking is sometimes dicey. Not every uh, kid in the area comes out with a giant kicker's leg that could kick a 50-something yard field goal. So Wallace will stay on the field. Needs to get the ball to the 26-yard line for a first down. Takes the snap. Steps, looks, he's going to go over the top on that one. That's going to go catch it. into okay. the air and incomplete, and that's a turnover on downs. And he had a wise decision just to let that one fall into the turf. Oakleaf Drive stalls, and Fleming Island will take over on offense. Well, if you're thinking about it from Oakleaf's point of view, if you punted that ball and it went in the end zone, you're getting less than 20 yards of plus field position, or you take a 50-50 shot play. Are you taking a chance to score a touchdown away from 20, less than 20 yards of field position? Yeah. And, you know, 10 yards is 10 yards. You get it You get it great. If not, just move on with life. It's early in the game, and this is not going to be your first fourth down attempt. And your defense is going to bail you out of this game. That, if they hate won their first game and put out a shutout, you're expecting your defense to come and be ready to play, especially off of two weeks of rest. Absolutely. Plenty of time to lick the wounds and get the bruises healed up. And here we go. First time tonight you're going to see the offense from Fleming Island. Quarterback Sebastian Broughton, number one, the junior. He'll have receivers trips to his left and then a good carry over the middle. And that's going to be Tyler Beverly, and they're going to push that pile and eventually blow it dead after about a six, seven yard gain. So starting off with quad right formation into boundary, which makes one of the receivers ineligible. Uh, it, it's an interesting formation, and they're going to show it again right here. So you're going to have two wide receivers on the line of scrimmage here. One is ineligible. So now we got to figure out which one of them is the decoy and which one's going to be. They're covering the decoy. Broughton will get a high snap, sling it to the back. That's going to get caught. Oh, great play to not block in the back there. Yes, and uh, Trace Burney gets that in the backfield, manages to get a maybe another yard or two, short of the first down by about two, maybe three yards. Brings up third down's first third down attempt tonight for Fleming Island. So we knew we'd see some creativity early, but you know, wide receiver split out wide, not eligible. That's a, that's a bold call. Something out of the brainchild of uh, Chad Parker there. And they're gonna kind of run a similar formation yet again. I, I, they, this is an interesting setup for Fleming Island. We used to see them run spread. Third down, give it over the middle. He's gonna push, and he is not gonna get the first down. He's gonna be about a yard short. A great gain, but a great push by the Oakleaf defense, and now it's decision time for Chad Parker. They're likely to go for this. I'm not quite the biggest fan of this strategy, trying to run it into the teeth of this defense. Now, the strength of their team looks to be their defensive line. And this is kind of what I figured they would end up doing, is try to pound the football, see if they can wear this defense out and make it the long game. Broughton on fourth down and one. He'll hold and get a play from the sidelines. I don't see a signal coming in from the sidelines. Oh, now there's one. All right, so it looks like they might have a play call in here, and I don't think Broughton's one to do many quick kicks either. Broughton will get a snap. He'll get a fake, and that's going to be right over Very the first close. down line and a yard, and that's a first down for Fleming Island, and they ran right in that great hole set up by the offensive line. Tyler Beverly with the first down, and just a plop right over that gain. Nothing fancy, and that's what you got to do. And we've got the timeout here for the mandatory water break here in Florida High School football. And with that, we'll take it with him. No score here with 6.05 to go in the first quarter. We'll be back after this on Florida Sports Broadcasting. Everyone from the time you walk into the door to every part of the process that has been done, when you come in, they're solely taking care of you. Thanks to New Teeth Now, I'm just going to be honest with you, I feel good. Happy wife, happy life. <laughs> yeah. No more gun disease, no more teeth falling out, no more self-doubt. You feel better, you look better, and it's a better way of life. With 6.05 left to go, Fleming Island just converted a first down on a fourth and short. Oakleaf's first drive stalled, and a turnover on downs was the result. We're BP alongside David Wells, happy you're with us tonight here on FSB. An exciting district matchup. 
here in Clay County. So first and 10 now at the 48 yard line. Golden Eagle still in their territory right now. We got Nate Newman playing running back. Now moving up to H back. Stack wide receivers and then they'll move and a little pop pass there and that's a good plant to the foot and he'll try to get around the edge and doesn't quite do it. They'll give him a yard on that game, but uh, he didn't quite plant his foot and stick hard enough, tried to get a little bit more east-west running, and that's never advisable against a speedy defense. And he should have. H-back, Nate Newman, need more Nate Newman. He's over there, oh, never not working, Nate Newman. He made an excellent block in there, cleared away through the middle. Just got to plant your foot and run forward, just like you said. Second and maybe a half-yard gain on that one. And, yeah, Bernie had plenty of green grass. All he had to do was plant and go. So they'll shift Beverly over and back again. Broaden takes the lofty snap. He'll get a pass in the flat. And Beverly will get a couple of yards on that pass play. And another great defensive play. That was James Kitchen. Uh, terrific open field tackle there coming from your safety spot. You know, when you're going full speed at a wide receiver who has the ability to break down, you need to go for his legs. Get him on the ground quickly. Third down and seven. Just a couple more yards on that one. Fleming Island, quick shift of personnel. And Devon Boykin now will come to the near side. Because they got two high safeties. They're really respecting the pass here. Not going to come with much rush. Broughton will take a snap. He'll give a read, give it over the middle. And that's a big hole right there. And a big first down run. And Tyler Beverly. And this is that thunder and lightning approach we were talking about. Beverly's been getting the lion's share of the work so far. But that was a great hole by that offensive line. And in come two more big defensive tackles for Oakleaf. So they're going to try to load the box here again. But they're keeping two safeties high and playing the same similar type of scheme or now they're dropping one, actually. They're trying to make sure that this run game doesn't keep going. Single safety high. Approaching the four-minute mark here, about 420 officially. Broughton will have those wide receivers out to the far side. Boykin to his left on the near side. Take a snap. They'll fake the handoff. Broughton's going to roll out of the Newman. pocket, step up and throw. That's wide open. Newman! And he caught it, and that's another first down, and that's Broughton's first pass of more than three yards. Nothing out of the backfield, and that's a good downfield throw for the Golden Eagles, first and 10. Former defensive tackle, uh, never not working, Nate Newman there with the catch. A first down and a nice play. Golden Eagles will go no huddle here on first down, just across the 30-yard line to the 28. Broughton will get a play in. They'll move everybody to the left of the formation. Nobody to the right now. Imagine this play is going to head in a certain direction. And now Broughton's got those two guys on the line again. Let's see if they keep that trick up. Broughton takes a step, comes around to the edge. Great blocking, great protection. And he wisely just gets a couple of yards and gets out of bounds. Crosses to the 25-yard line. Now, normally really difficult not to grab a handful of jersey when the play is designed to go to the left and the quarterback decides to pull it off to the right. So good job keeping your hands inside the shoulder pads of the uh, Oak Leaf defenders. Yes, yeah, very disciplined blocking there by the offensive line. And again, very important for both teams that the penalties don't mount up in this very important district matchup. So far, minimal impact from these defensive ends. Get a snap, fake the pop pass, they'll give it to... Beverly, who goes over the middle, and another great push by the offense of the defensive line, and a flag on the play here. And that is kind of late, and I wonder if they're they might be calling it some excessive roughness roughness on uh, number 99 for Oakleaf. Kind of looking at the be, uh, Amari Thomas, looking at the replay for our vantage point, and uh, that may or may not be the case. I didn't look egregious, but that stops the clock with 3:20 to go. Okay, so to John Brown, guilty of the infraction, slamming Beverly into the turf, and that'll move the sticks first down. All right, excellent opportunity here in the red zone. Uh, you want to get the uh, ball into the hands of your talented receivers and make them let them make a play and get into the end zone. Fake, Broughton throws wide open. No, incomplete, just out of the reach of Devon Boykin. And all this running has really put the uh, Oak Leaf defense on their heels there. No pass rush on that play. He probably could have just waltzed it in himself. Yeah. Stops the clock with 3.11 to go here. 
Broughton will get a play in and uh, shift the personnel around a reset, second and 10. You really want to see him drive in more of these throws. He's an excellent layering down the field kind of thrower, but he needs to be able to drive in window throws. The easy completions like that, that he's going to have to do at the collegiate level. Spot the ball around about the 13-yard line. They can get a first down inside the five. Broughton gets the snap, calls his own number, tries to get the edge, can't get it, wiggles his way around, gets a, maybe a yard or so. So again, you get that quad formation to the left where one of your receivers is not eligible. That's to set off big red flags to the defense that this is most likely going to be either a run play or a screen in that direction. Oakley did a pretty good job staying at home on that one. Third down and nine for this Golden Eagle offense. They've stalled inside the red zone after sort of sustaining a drive downfield. 2.39 to go here in the first quarter and counting. Get a snap, Broughton steps up, throws over the middle. That is intercepted in the end zone, and that shuts down the drive. Well, Sebastian Broughton trying to throw into the earlier window of that progression. He takes a nice three-step drop, is very calm in the pocket, but decides to hit first window instead of seeing the safety roll into the middle of the field, hold the ball, and then throw the crosser to the other side. You had Boykin there, the, uh, the deep third and the outside third. Uh, if you just let that play develop a little bit more, and they had the time to do so, defense dropping eight in coverage. Jackie Shepard, the interceptor on that play, and that's where Fleming Island will stall. Oakleaf takes over on the 20-yard line. Well, your defense should be well rested. You know, we didn't hear a lot from uh, Nate Van Hoff on that first series. He was dominant in the first game for the Golden Eagles, so need to see him get after the quarterback as they're probably going to try to run the ball at you yet again. First and 10 for the Oakleaf Knights now. Fleming Island did kind of do their job, though, and extend a drive, keep that defense off the field. And now here we go again. Wallace gets over the middle to Foy. Foy's got a big hole. He's going to get wrapped up and still drive the pile. Crosses the 40 to the 42-yard line, and a big run, and that was not what Fleming Island was expecting. So the Golden Eagles going with two high safeties there. They're going to have to fix this and put more men into the box, and they're going to have to do it early which is going to leave these outside receivers open to shots. Knights running tempo here. Take a snap. Wallace hands it to Foy again. And a nice tackle. Oh, initially, at least Ooh. an initial stop there. Oh, my goodness. That lower body strength balance and uh, want to that comes out of Foy. Excellent run there. And if Sebastian Cruz hadn't put a hit on him early, that could have gone for another 10, 15 yards. Foy gets about six. Knight Go for the knees, guys. Go for the knees. Knights go tempo. And now they'll hold up here and get a call from the sidelines. 150 and counting here in our first quarter. Now something I noticed from their first game, they might not have that much depth at running back. So you already see Foy huffing and puffing a little bit. He, they're going to have to give him the ball a couple more times to stay successful like this. Second down. Wallace gives to Foy again right into that defense. And Fleming Island plugs the jug, only gives him about three more yards on that play. And that'll be third down. And now Foy's calling for a flag. And the Oakleaf fans are calling for a flag, too. So you're not going to get it after this one. That was not apparently as egregious as the last one. That's yeah, pretty borderline. I, I do think that that's an incredibly similar play to what had just happened the series before for Fleming Island. But uh, Golden Eagles dodge a bullet. And we got a key third down here early. Third and about two and a half. Just shy of the 50-yard line here in minus territory. And how long I've waited to say, oh, here comes a big third down. Yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> Fleming Island creeps up to the line of scrimmage, and they... Shift oh, just Nate Van Hoff, about millimeters away there, man. Just wiggled back to the other side in the neutral zone. <laughs> Under a minute to play here. Get a snap. Wallace, and we have Ooh. a stoppage of play. I'm not sure he got that play off. And Fleming Island called the timeout here with 42 seconds to go. And we'll keep it right here. I'm not sure he would have got that. He slipped once he caught the ball. Yeah, he, he might not or he might not have gotten the first down for sure. It looked like he might have had a, a knee close to being down. The traction on the field was questionable here. So, And again, if you're just joining us, there is no score here with 42 seconds to go in the first quarter. BP alongside David Wells. Happy you're joining us tonight for the opening of district play here at Oakleaf High School. So what we were expecting when we came into this game was a uh, the offense to go through their quarterback, to be able to not only distribute the ball to the outside, but for him to be a rushing threat as well in uh, Brandon Wallace. But what we've really seen is the offense runs through Chris Foy. It's that middle interior run game that's going to be the driving force for Oakleaf in this one. Absolutely. So then the longer he can keep up that pressure, the harder it's going to be for Fleming Island to keep moving. But as we saw earlier, he, he is a bit of a tank and will run out of steam after a while. So 
offensive balance may be the key for Oak Leaf tonight. Fleming Island playing, playing well so far on defense. Kind of bend, don't break. We'll line up again on third and two on the 49-yard line. Wallace will check at the line of scrimmage, and then they'll set again. He'll take the snap, calls his own number again, gets across just enough for the first down. Oh, He'll get down to the, the ground. That's a fumble. Spotted at the 47-yard line, and he got it back. We'll check that replay really quick, and from a vantage point we got, he might have lost it, but hard to tell from our side. But that'll be a first down for Oakleaf. Spot the ball at the 47 of Fleming Island. Closing seconds here of the first quarter. First down, stop the clock with 35 seconds to go. Now, Fleming Island doesn't have that many bodies to rotate through, so they're going to put pass rushers on the field. They're going to put defensive ends at defensive tackle. They just got to find a way to stay fresh legged on defense. Four wide receivers. And I think Wallace is going to have to try to get another play in here before the end of the quarter. They are taking their sweet time, though. Last 10 seconds, and I think they might have enough time on the play clock that they'd have to snap it. And they did not. Stops the clock with six seconds to go, and they'll back up five, and I wonder what the holdup was. Now, I don't see play clocks down here, do they? No. Oh, that's a tough one. We're going to buy Ray Canaveri a cold beverage after this for keeping on the clock tonight. That is no small task. Oh, I've had to do that before, Ray. I, yeah, that, was, that <laughs> we, wasn't working out. We feel that. <laughs> Trying to call the game and do the uh, scoreboard at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it wasn't happening. Six seconds to go here it was in the first. first down the whole game. And a bobble on the uh, snap. That didn't really go anywhere. Foy manages to pick it up behind the line, and he still gets across for about a three-yard game, and that's going to do it for the first quarter. The ground ball rolls out, and that's where we will stop for right now. One quarter in the books, no score here at Oakleaf. You're watching Friday Night Lights here on FSB. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes. The United Soccer Alliance is a full-service soccer club for all ages. The United Soccer Alliance will train your child with professionally licensed coaches. And make sure you check out the United Sports Alliance's flag football program. For more information about soccer and the flag football program, go to unitedsocceralliance.org. Back here live, Friday Night Lights here on FSB. BP alongside David Wells. Second quarter of play starting momentarily. We've got a quick performance from a dance team here, here at Oakleaf. The flip side. So, so far, David, what do you think? I like what I've seen out of both teams so far. This is kind of what I expected in the uh, first quarter. So what I expect here in the second quarter is going to be uh, a defensive dominant performance from Fleming Island. If they're able to hold up this running game, see what they're doing as far as the uh, interior run game goes, and they're going to be holding up a lot better. Uh, you got to shoot some gaps here and bring some pressure because there's only one dimension to this uh, uh, Oak Leaf offense right now. Yeah, absolutely. So we uh, high school high school football full of adventures here as we have a uh, quick performance at the end of the quarter. Not what we're used to seeing elsewhere, but hey, it's it's a big game. Why not throw out all the stops? Everybody's going to have some fun tonight and get some performances in. Of course, you're going to hear from Eagle Band One at the half as well. It's a pack, pack night full of uh, to-the-minute schedule. Absolutely. And let me tell you what, speaking of a packed house, we've got folks down in the end zones uh, sitting down over there, and it's a beautiful night here in the press box. It's got a, a breeze coming into us. It's nice and cool. I understand probably get into the low to mid-70s tonight as the uh, sun goes down, so it's going to be a gorgeous night for football. Rained a little earlier today, which is probably why some of the traction on the field has been questionable. It is a little damp. There's a couple slips and slides here. You know, it's going to make that interior run a little bit harder if you can't get your footing. All right, we're reset. Got 12 more minutes on the clock. Oakleaf will continue here on second down and about six. So far, the run game has been the story for the Knights. They're keeping two, si two high safeties here on uh, second and about six. Wallace will get a snap, takes it, 
Drops back, rolls to his right, pressure coming around. Wallace will take it himself, and here comes that threat. He'll slide, and he'll get a first down. Mark him just shy of the 30-yard line, call it the 29, and that's going to be first down for And the uh, for Oakley. Oakley fans are real upset for not getting a flag there. You know, those are two questionable hits there that are definitely going to be dicey. You saw something called on Fleming Island or against or for Fleming Island early in the first quarter, so... Yeah, it's, it's getting a little dicey. This is, how, this is how you start fights. Getting a little chippy here in the castle already. First and 10. Just underway here in the second quarter. Four wide receivers for Wallace. He'll give to Foy over the middle, and that's a big hole right there. And the big man runs downfield and gets about 14 more yards and another first down across the 20-yard line. Oakley was in the red zone. Now, Sebastian Cruz had the right idea there. He flew down there when he recognized run, but you've got to be a little bit quicker on that trigger and then go a little bit lower so he doesn't get those extra yards. Now, yeah. that's the difference between getting a first down and not. And they completely cleared that hole for Foy here. He'll get to the 19-yard line. Wallace gets a snap, handed to Foy again, and there's another dose, and then Fleming Island with a great stop on that one and a couple of pair of hands by Jarius Rogers grabbing Foy and bringing him down after he crosses the 15 to the 14-yard line. So they've involved Nate Newman a lot on offense, which is taking him away from defense here. And uh, they definitely miss his presence along that interior defensive line. Second down and five here. This is Oakleaf's first trip into the red zone this afternoon. Back out that spread formation with Foy sidecar to Wallace's right. Get a play in from the sidelines here. Fleming Island making some adjustments. And then they'll man up, take a snap, high snap. Foy gets the grab, finds that hole in the middle. He fights his way and then gets tackled across the 10-yard line. Now about the six. That's going to be enough for an Oakley first down. That first and goal here. First, first and deepest penetration by Oakley this far into Fleming Island territory. And the Golden Eagles had quite a bit of success in their first game against Clay with that defensive pressure. Let's see if they can hold up here. Spot the ball at the seven yard line under 10 and a half minutes. A Wallace light box. gets it to Foy and then he gets pounded in. He might get down to about the five yard line and that's it. Good pressure by Fleming Island catching the run and minimal damage there. Second down. Easily double digits now for touches for Floyd. Uh, and I think that Foy's gonna get the ball probably 30 times in this game. It's guaranteed at this point. Second and goal. Spot the ball at the six. Van Hoff got credit for the tackle there. Good stop. We're going to be calling his name even more as the evening wears on. Three wide receivers to the right of the formation. Foy will come to left of Wallace to see if they give to that side. Takes a snap. Wallace will roll out. That's going to be a pass play. Some pressure. They're going to get called for holding. Wallace is going to get into the end zone, but it's all for naught. As that obvious grab in the backfield, and it looks like a takedown on that one. It looks like they're going to call that on number 52, and I didn't see a grab of the jersey there, but Chris Jules is going to get called for the, the hold here, and it's probably because it looked like a takedown. Yeah, if you take down Nate Van Hoff in the backfield, it's probably pretty noticeable as one of the bigger people on that uh, Fleming Island defensive line. Yeah. And Wallace had a really good scamper into the end zone, and that wipes six points off the board with 9.40 to go here in the half. Not very often that you get a number called in high school ball. It's usually reserved for college and the pros, but my guess was correct on that one. So they back it up 10 yards to the 16-yard line, second and goal. Now you get one more time to stop the run, and then you bring your pass pressures on the field. So, you know, backed up here, the windows get a little bit tighter. They're going to have four guys in the backfield here. With diamond formation. Interesting look at Foy dotting it, and then he'll spread out. And they'll get a give, and then Wallace takes the fake himself, and he gets a couple of yards on that one. John Brown lays a block out there for him. He was the decoy target on that one. Wallace takes it himself, calls his own number, and gets about three or four more yards. Third down. You see an obvious passing situation here. Here's where I would like to put Jarius Rodgers on the field, where he has the ability to pin his ears back and go after the quarterback. That's when he's most effective. Spot him inside the 15-yard line at the 14, third and goal. They'll stay in that diamond formation again. Foy will stay in it, get the carry. He shuffles and shifts and powers his way, and then there's a flag on the play, and I think, are they going to call holding again here? Ooh, we need to really teach the, uh, the feathering technique to uh, Nate Van Hoff there. He was 
caught in no man's land on that meet, on that read option. I don't think he would have gotten the quarterback if he pulled it and definitely didn't take the running back and almost gave up a score. Let's see what the call is here. And I'm That's where you, uh, you squeeze the uh, end of the line of scrimmage out to where he has to pull the ball, and then you use your lateral agility and speed to go run down the quarterback. Fleming Island bringing on their kick coverage team. I think they're pretty sure that this scored. And a personal foul, a face mask. That's on Fleming Island. And he did not get into the end zone, so they're going to call that inside the one-yard line. Uh, tough situation. You're going to have Fleming Island bringing in some of their uh, offensive linemen, their biggest bodies they can to hear uh, to stop this, uh, this run game that's just taken over this and, second quarter. And if I'm not mistaken, he said replay third down, even though that was a personal foul face mask. So they're going to crowd the line of scrimmage here, and we have a false start. Oakleaf just leaned in a little bit, and I think that John Brown was leaning in a little earlier than he needed to, and that will back that up five more yards. And Oakleaf shot themselves in the foot after getting a gift from Fleming Island. A couple costly penalties on Oakleaf, uh, especially early in this game. Uh, they're an explosive offense so far, but you got to see a, a clean, clean brand of football if you're going to win this one. Absolutely. So, and, and Oakleaf is going to call a timeout here. Let's take a quick timeout with him, catch our breath, and when we come back, we'll see if Oakleaf can plug it in here. You're watching Friday Night Lights here on FSB. Mr. Chubby's Wings are more than just wings with a great food and beverage selection. Mr. Chubby's is the home of the original Fleming Island Happy Hour, Monday through Friday, 4 to 7 p.m. And you can catch all your favorite sporting events on the numerous TVs, including all Fleming Island football games on FSB. Before or after the game, Mr. Chubby's has you covered, and they're only eight-tenths of a mile from the Fleming Island High School campus. You can order online at MrChubby'sWings.com or call 904-272-WINGS. And while you're at it, let Mr. Chubby's cater your next event. Call 904-272-WINGS. Coming out of the timeout here at Oakley High School, BP alongside David Wells. It's third and goal for the Knights at the five-yard line. Had the ball inside the one, had a chance to score and did, but it was called back on a false start penalty. No score in this game. Surprisingly, David Wells, there is no score in this game with 8.44 to go in the half. Yeah, I, I came into this kickoff thinking it was going to be a shootout. You know, it was going to be an offense that had a great job in their first week versus uh, Sebastian Broughton and a high-flying Eagles attack. But uh, a defensive slugfest so far, and let's see if we get some points on the board here. Absolutely. So, third down. Chance for Fleming Island to bow up and see if they can take some points off the board here. Wallace will get the call from sideline. And he is still over there with Coach. Now he's finally got what he needs, and he'll get to the formation here. Got to be careful of a delay penalty. We've already had one so far, just kind of taking their time. I'm not sure if the uh, official has blown this ready for play or not. Wallace is coming back to the sidelines. And I'm not. And I said that his helmet came off, and they have to pull him for one play. Yeah, they said his helmet. Yeah, they're saying his helmet came off, but didn't they get a timeout in? And now they're going to bring up the backup quarterback here, Jackson Cowart. He's also a senior, and after some equipment questions, Cowart will have to sit in for a play. And that's kind of weird coming out of a timeout like that. So no Foy and uh, no Wallace here. Let's see what the Knights do. High snap, gives it, and that's going to get powered in. And to John Brown, doesn't get anywhere. Fleming Island plugs that up. And now Wallace will come in on fourth down, but I'm not sure if they're going to even bother with it. It looks like they're bringing on the special teams. Now uh, the kicker a little bit dicey in pregame, but he did make some kicks uh, in week one, so we'll see how this goes. Andrew McDavid, the junior, is who's listed as the kicker. And it looks like he'll take that out of the hole of Cowart. Now, don't jump off sides here because I bet they would go for it if it was a little bit closer. And I think, I think you're right on that one. Let's see if they can stay at home here. And they do. The kick is up and away. And it is good. Nice kick. So with 7.58 to go in the first half, we have our first points of the game. Oakleaf up 3-0. What a fight for just three points. Yeah, this has been a dogfight. I, I, I am surprised given the explosive nature of both of these offenses. I didn't think that... 
this would be so tight after the first half. I'd be interested to see what adjustments we're going to make here as we get down to the remainder of this portion of the game. And we're happy you're with us tonight here on Florida Sports Broadcasting. Well, a portion of me thinks that you have to prove that uh, Oak Leaf High School has superior athletes to Fleming Island. They're throwing the ball down the field. You saw somewhere in the red zone where they were able to uh, use that negative space, that uh, sideline to their back, to make things a lot easier to not have to run over the top. Go and test them deep down the field. Use Sebastian, uh, Sebastian Brunton's arm strength and accuracy down the field to test and stretch this defense. Yeah, and it's a surprising, too. You know, Fleming Island only giving up three points. That's a win after this slugfest we've been in right now. I would think so, too. Absolutely. Yeah, even the field goal is, is worth it right now. As long as they're not in the end zone and this, and this crowd can't get fired up. Got Shaq Quarterman launching T-shirts into the student section. That's cool. Go Jags. Boykin and Bernie are back deep for Fleming Island. Boykin had a, Ooh. what a hit, right at the 30-yard line. Held low, Sebastian Cruz lowers a shoulder. and I don't think Sebastian gets the ball all that often, so he's pretty excited to uh, to use some forward momentum and lay the hit there. And that, uh, that tackler is very slow to get up. That would be uh, number one for them. That's, uh, that's Neil White. Neil White had a great performance last week. Six solo tackles, 12 total tackles. You know, a smaller defender, just a consistent tackler. I don't think he has a ton of stopping power. He just gets to the ball well. Put the nose of the football right at the 30-yard line with 7.51. Hey, and at the end of the day, you just got to get him to the ground. Yeah, that's, that's really all you got to do. Three wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Let's see if we can... Get him a little bit more offense here. Broughton takes the snap, fakes the handoff, calls his own number, gets out of the pressure, and cannot get to the line of scrimmage at a five, maybe six yard loss. And this is what we were talking about. If Oakleaf wants to keep Fleming Island contained, they gotta bury the worm in the backfield and not let him improvise. Yeah, you're gonna give that to 18, Courtney Robinson. That's one of the two defensive ends we highlighted in our, uh, in our pregame show. Him and uh, number nine, Justin, uh, Marsh Mency, those two are two excellent guys that squeeze the pocket down. If you hold on to the ball too long, it's going to be a problem. Robinson contributing to that five-sack game against Orange Park. That's the first sack of the night for the Knights. Single high coverage. Broughton takes a snap. A little bit better pocket. They throw it underneath on a tunnel screen. Good move, Boykin. He'll get another block, gets upfield, and he is gone. Davian Boy Devon Boykin to the 30, to the 25, to the 20, to the 15, 10, 5, and our first touchdown of the game goes to Devon Boykin. Touchdown, Golden Eagles. Touchdown. Excellent play there. Run after catch ability, slide, lateral agility down the field to make somebody miss. Dropped a couple times and then runs it in for the touchdown. Excellent play. Uh, field stretcher just to prove. Are your athletes equal to what Fleming Island has to offer? Can you test the ball and stress it down the field? Calvin Johnson getting in the way of a defender on that one. Tyler Beverly getting in the way of the defender, but not throwing an egregious block. Pretty disciplined on that one. And the extra point coming from Parker Sertivan. 6-3 right now with 6.55 to go after that explosive play. Likely a big confidence booster for Sebastian Broughton, too. So to get him into rhythm, uh, it, it's fantastic to see for the Golden Needles. And that's exactly what you're needed if you're Chad Parker right now and get this team motivated. Kick is up and away, and Sertivan splits the uprights. That's good. 7-3 now with 6.55 to go in the first half. We are approaching the mandatory water break here in the second quarter, and that will come up, and when we do that, we'll take time out. In the meantime, we'll stick it right here. That was exciting. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I was waiting for a big play, and we got it very quickly coming out of that kickoff. Yep, and, and you called it. They needed to do something to get their athletes matched up, and that little tunnel screen right there was exactly what they needed to get downfield. And once Boykin's in space, forget about it. He showed off the wheels and made something happen. Yeah, there was just too much size in the interior and in the offensive line for uh, Oakleaf. They're a very talented unit there, or at least they're uh, big, physical, and willing. So yeah, uh, and as, as long as you have big hog mollies, it's a game at the line of scrimmage. And if you can try to take that away, that's how you win. And these guys will put seven, eight, maybe nine in the box. So if you can spread them out a little bit, do something to get your athletes involved. Now, the Golden Eagles are carrying five defensive backs on the field at all times. And they might want to go away from that strategy and put bigger bodies on the field, although who do you have to be that extra linebacker? Right, that's a big question that Chad Parker's staff will have to answer here as we progress onward. But nonetheless, damage done for the Golden Eagles. Oakleaf will take over now, sort of in lines up to kick. 
and they'll still do that squib to keep that out of Oakley's skill players. Picked up at the 25-yard line, a good scamper, and then they'll hit him out of bounds. A little close on that one as well. They're getting really, uh, really pushy there with how close they could hit him late after the whistle. Yeah, just <laughs> and again, this is something that we said at the top of the broadcast. you got to play between the whistles, and that was Malachi Warden, the up back, taking that one into the, actually, no, just across the 40-yard line, the Sparta at the 41. First and 10 for the Knights. 6.49 to go in the half. Coming up at halftime, we'll break down this very interesting first half. Eagle Band 1 will be on the field performing for your halftime entertainment. And again, we're happy you're with us here for Friday Night Lights on FSB. So uh, a little bit of cause for concern for Oakley if they have not involved uh, Michael Connor in this game so far. Foy out into the open field once again, crosses the 50, just shy of the 45-yard line, get him down to about the 46. Well, and when, they, when you can rip off 10 yards on first down, uh, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, and, and that's kind of been the, the go-to for Oakley is just give the ball to your big man and see if Fleming Island can stop them, and so far the answer has been no. The question has been, can you punch it into the end zone? Look to Oakleaf right now, maybe throw a big play here, see if they can stretch the field down. First down in the Golden Eagle territory, the 47. Give it again to Foy and a steady diet of him. He cuts around the edge. Fleming Island doesn't set it. First down, and again, Arian Witz with the touchdown saving tackle, and Foy is just running a rock rough shed over this Fleming Island defense right now. It's getting to the point where you're probably going to have to run cover zero, zero safeties deep, man coverage to the outside, and try to find some way to stuff these run lanes. And Wallace will take advantage of that and throw it over the top for sure. I wouldn't be surprised. If Foy it. gets momentum going, he's going to take you the extra five yards. You can't let him get past that initial uh, set of tacklers. And this may be the part of the track meet that you're seeing, Davis. Things open up here. Six minutes to go in the half. Wallace gets it. Now a new running back in here, and he is not quite Foy. And Fleming Island keys on that and stuffs him immediately. That carry goes to number 31, Travis Pinkard, sophomore. Yeah, if I'm Oakley, if I'm trying to feed Foy as much as possible, but when he's not on the field, be able to use your quarterback and distribute the ball to your receivers. We're at the midpoint in the quarter here, so with 5.47 to go in the half, it's time for a water break, and we need one too. Let's take a quick timeout. We'll come back with we'll the rest of this exciting first half here. You're watching Friday Night Lights on FSB. The United Soccer Alliance is a full-service soccer club for all ages. The United Soccer Alliance will train your child with professionally licensed coaches. And make sure you check out the United Sports Alliance's flag football program. For more information about soccer and the flag football program, go to unitedsocceralliance.org. Back here at Oakleaf High School, BP alongside David Wells and our entire FSB team here tonight for our game of the week. It's everybody's game of the week. This is the place to be here in North Florida. If you're watching football across town, this is the place to be for week four. Otherwise, if you're not here tonight, we're glad you're with us on Florida Sports Broadcasting. Don't forget, you can catch replays of all of our games and all of the sports that we cover throughout the athletic season on floridasportsbroadcasting.com and on our YouTube channel. Take a snap, a little low snap there. Tries to throw a quick give, and then he'll scamper over to the middle. That is number 12, Jackie Shepard. Excellent job by Shepard just to navigate through that traffic. It looked like he was going to get caught in the backfield, but he found the lane and took it. And he is a, sort of a scat back type runner. They have him listed as a wide receiver, but, you know, most modern offenses will do something across the formation, that little pop pass. or They, they want to involve those slot receivers. Those slot receivers they have are, were the ones that touched the ball the most in the first week, and I think they're going to try to do the same here against the Eagles. Four wideouts for Oakleaf. Foy will come back into the game as a sidecar to the right of Wallace. Cover zero, nobody deep. Yep, they've pushed up. No safety help on this one. Let's see if Oakleaf recognizes that. 4.56 and counting here. Wallace will take a snap, some pressure, but he'll throw it over the top, and that is caught, and a touchdown for Oakleaf. That's that young freshman wide receiver we highlighted earlier in the pregame show, Michael Connor. Uh, him matched up against Sebastian Cruz. Uh, Sebastian Cruz, we call that a slot fade. You take an outside release, and your uh, your perimeter receiver runs a hitch that allows a lot of 
face to the sideline and a big window for your quarterback to throw into. An excellent play against cover zero, especially in the high red zone. A lot of talented young speed on this field for both teams right now. Connor, this is his first touchdown of the night, and Wallace's first touchdown pass of the evening. Extra point coming here for the Knights. Hold down, kick up, that is good. So our new score with 4.42 to go in the first half. Oak Leaf 10, Fleming Island 7. David, I think your track meet is coming. Good, good. I came for some, shoot, uh, some fireworks and a shootout. So. Abs absolutely, some offense for once. 4.42 to go in this first half. Some explosions for both teams right now, big plays, and this is exactly what you called it, David. They crept up, cover zero, and threw it downfield. So they've lulled Fleming Island to sleep for now. Will they make that adjustment again? Who knows? I, I, I think if you're Chad Parker at this point, you might want to find a way to get the interior taken care of. Otherwise, you're going to see more of that later. Oh, absolutely. You're going to have to find a way to uh, sure up that run game early and still have that safety deep because this quarterback will telegraph his throw, and if you have a safety deep to capitalize on that, that'll take that side away. On the flip side, you weren't even able to stop this run game with eight in the box. So how are you going to be able to mix and match that and where you're predicting their play calls and are one step ahead? Absolutely. And offensively here, you saw the success of distributing the ball to your wide receivers. I want to see more shots down the field. Yeah, looking forward to it. Well, let's see what Chris Foy's Knights here do on the kickoff here, and they're going to kick that one, and that's going to go to Cruz once again, and he laid the lumber on the last one. He crosses the 30, lays another big hit across the 35, and these boys are slugging on the kickoffs. 4.38 to go in the half. Fleming Island will take over with decent field position. They'll spot the ball at the 36-yard line, probably 37-yard line. That's exactly Nope, 38. There we go. Officials kind of trotting out there to see where we are at first and 10. Average field position for both teams, not bad. Not having a hard time getting in decent territory. I really think both teams on kickoff were trying to prevent the big play. Like yeah. Fleming Island's athletes, you don't want to give the ball in their hands. And on the flip side, Fleming Island has uh, issues covering those kickoffs. So trying to get a little bit of both worlds. Absolutely. Well, and I can't blame them with some of the talent that's on the receiving team. Uh, either way, for, for both sides of the ball, you definitely don't want them to break one, that's for sure. Sebastian Broughton, though, looking to break one here on first down. Here we get a give, and here he goes. Oh, my goodness, never not working in our Fleming Island big man. Nate Newman, new back extraordinaire. He's found his new role, and the molds flowing in the wind. I think Fleming Island may be onto something. I'll see your big man and raise you mine. First down to the 46-yard line. Broughton takes a snap. He'll give. This time he gives it to Beverly. Crosses just about a yard. Nothing there. Tyler Beverly, sort of the lightning to the thunder here. And I've not seen Demir Jackson in the backfield at all. And after kind of looking around the roster, you know, he's, he's listed to play tonight, but I, I haven't really seen him in the game. Unless, or at least on offense. Yeah, that's their big physical running back, and I, I don't think I've seen him either. I'm looking at the sidelines, and I don't see a – it's supposed to be a 34, correct? A number seven. No, number seven now. Yeah, so I, I don't see him. Anyway, Broughton will fake the give. He's going to throw over the top. He's got Robin a wide-open receiver, and baby Megatron uh. can't stay in bounds. Wide open, and he was going to scamper into the end zone on that one. Right read, just not the best throw there. Calvin Johnson – Stops the clock with 3.42 to go, and that's third down. Again, you'd like to see Sebastian Broughton drive it into a wide open receiver. You don't have to lead the guy. You don't have to make the perfect play. If he's open, put it on him right between the numbers. Just stick it in there. So third down and 10 now for the Golden Eagles. Four wide receivers. Broughton looks over, and they'll get settled. Gets a snap. Pass play all the way. Broughton that has got a flag on the play, probably holding. And... Beverly can't miss that one. Uh, it was a pretty atrocious hold, but the flag is on the sideline in the area of offsides. That is fourth down for now. Let's see what the call is. I believe they're going to give him offsides. And they're going over to the Oak Leaf sideline here to uh, have a conversation. Oh, illegal formation. So we'll see if we can make a decision here as to if they want to take this penalty or... And they will decline that penalty, the shift penalty. So that's fourth down and a decision for the Golden Eagles at this point. Got to have your uh, receiver set. 
when you have men in motion like that, and that's going to force Fleming Island to punt. That's the first punt of the game. And out to punt is Parker Sertiman, who will be splitting duties to kicker and punter tonight. 3.37 to go here in the half. There's too many folks on the field. No, there's nobody covering the gunner. There's nobody covering the gunner. And we have a flag on the play. Coach is on the field. And let's see, we're going to get a participation call here. I think that might be what the issue is because uh, Oakleaf was scrambling to get another guy off now, the field. Are you, you going to call that a sideline warning or do you call that, I guess there is nothing else between sideline warning and personal foul, is there? It should be a sideline warning, I would assume. I would imagine that's going to be the call here. Well, let's see what we... It's just a warning, so it shouldn't even be affecting the game. I don't think there is anything in between. And he's pointing in the direction of Oakleaf. Let's see what the call is. So that's the illegal substitution. We got an explanation. In high school ball, you, you can't come off the field and then return on the same down, and that's why this is a substitution penalty. And Chad Parker here is going to roll the dice uh, now right, on fourth now and you five. you got to get on the ball. you got to have some sense of urgency lining up here. The uh, play clock has definitely already started. Uh, I would get your hand on this football and start rolling. Got a chance to get a first down here in a manageable situation instead of having to punt to Oakleaf. And you probably have less than 10 seconds to snap this ball. You better hurry. Broughton will get in, and he looks like he's just going to get this play off, and he does. Steps back. He's got some pressure. There's another hold, but they're not going to call it. Broughton's going to scramble out, and the Worm's going to get a first down. And the fans are probably really close. Definitely a hold there on that left yeah. tackle yeah, the on, uh, on number nine for uh, Oakley. For Brandon, uh, sorry, the uh, Justin and Marsh Mency. He had a clear path to Sebastian Broughton and had a uh, his jersey ripped. Yeah, you that, could see that from miles away. That was an egregious hold. I cannot believe they didn't see that. But nonetheless, now we're going to get a timeout on the field, and it looks like they're going to measure. Now, if this if this goes Fleming Island's way, the Oakleaf crowd is going to go berserk. If it goes Oakleaf's way, the crowd's going to go berserk. So we'll stop play here with 3.27 to go in the half, and we'll get a measurement to see if Broughton got enough for the first down. And what a bizarre sequence we've had here. So we, we went from kind of a, a relatively quiet first quarter to a somewhat more eventful second quarter. Can't wait to see how the rest of the game comes out. Going forward on fourth down, a little riverboat gambler. I like it. Don't blame him at this point. You know, you're only down three, very much in this game. And we're going to get a – we can't see it. I don't know if our camera angle can get close enough to look at this. It's kind of there, but let's see where the spot is. And that is first down Golden Eagles. Which realistically, that should not be because that was a pretty obvious hold. So, Oakleaf can't stop Sebastian Broughton. 3.27 to go and they will spot the ball at the 36 yard line. Probably call it more of the 35 and a half. And we'll resume play here. Well. We'll try this one more time here. First and ten. Four wide receivers. Broughton gets a snap, fakes the give, throws it over the middle. That's caught. Boykin can't get a blocker, and he'll get a stamper, and he shouldn't have retreated there. He actually gave up a yard or so. They call it about eight. That's when you break down on that two-point stance, and uh, he's shaking and baking and freezes the entire defense off of that one long run that he had. It really puts a little fear in them. You know, you got to be able to tackle in space against a very superior athlete. So first and ten. Oh, not first and ten. Second down and about three. You get a snap. Broughton will roll to his right. Throw a little high for Boykin. That was the man he wanted. You see, if you put Boykin on the run, he's a little bit less effective as a passer. His accuracy is going to go down a significant amount. Uh, Boykin's best when stepping up into the pocket and delivering the ball down the field. Uh, not particularly great throwing to his right and on the run. I've never heard the overrated chant. For Sebastian Broughton, I have not. In, in, yeah, in, in, well, in high school football in general. 
Oh, I'll, yeah, that's all the time. Though. You just say that to the best players in the area. That's actually <laughs> you know, a little confidence booster for Sebastian Rodden. like, wait, me? Don't, don't, don't give him any bulletin board material, I guess. Third down and manageable for Fleming Island. Calls his own number, scampers away, and he's going to get short of a first down. That's going to be an interesting spot yet, yet again. And I imagine even if they don't get it here, he's going to go for it for sure. Well, if you don't have Demir Jackson, then I would assume that you're going to keep the ball in your best player's hands, and that's obviously going to be Sebastian Broughton. Right. Well, and uh, Nate Newman's going to come back out here, so they're going to go to a bigger set here. They were not working. Here we go. Lining up at H-back. Fourth, right side. fourth down and short. Let's see what they dial up here. And they come to the outside. They can't set the edge, and there's a flag on the play. This time it looks like they're going to call holding. He got the first down on that one as Oakleaf had set the edge for a minute, but Beverly had managed to come around. And now we got a flag. Now that one might be on the running back ever so slightly. We talked about it earlier in the first quarter. When you have a play designed to go up the middle and you bounce it to the outside, you know, you have your back towards the ball, and what you're supposed to be running right behind you ends up going the opposite direction. And when it goes in that opposite direction, that's when offensive linemen get a lot of holding calls because their hands are right attached to the chest plate of the defender. And you were right. They called it on the running back. They called it on Nate Newman. So... Move it all the way back to the 36-yard line, pretty much the original line of scrimmage. Golden Eagles will keep the offense on the field. Now, it's the same situation that Oakley had earlier in the first half. You might take a shot here because you're only gaining 20 yards of field position if this goes into the end zone as a, as a touchback. Approaching the two-minute mark here in yes. the half. Broughton will have three to his right. Boykin in the slot here. Takes a snap. Looks, steps up, he's going to try to create here, throws it over the middle, that is tipped and incomplete. And Jackie Shepard makes the huge play for the Oakleaf Knights, and that'll stop the drive. Puts a little uh, wind in your sails, a little bit more momentum into the uh, Oakleaf High School football team here, and you got 146, perfect amount of time for a two-minute drive to drive the ball down the field, and you're actually going to have to put the ball in your quarterback's hands here, and we'll see how it goes. And I don't blame Fleming Island for trying to go for it regardless because they're going to get the ball to start the second half. So, But if your defense needs to make a play, it's right now. You want to keep Oakleaf out of the end zone and not giving them any more momentum than they already have gained. Jackie Shepard with a huge play on defense. He's been doing things on offense here for the Knights and will set up first and 10 just across the 35-yard line. Wallace to get a snap. Here comes Foy again. They can't tackle him, and tackling him high is not – Worth it, but a gangrene defense will finally get a stop with the clock running, 137. And counting here, he'll get about a seven-yard gain. So not the most urgent of tempo for Oakleaf here. I don't see him rushing to the line of scrimmage. They might not be quite built for the two-minute drill this early in the season. Second down, I give him about a five-yard gain. We said he stopped his forward progress. Foyt is back in the backfield, and that was a great stop by Fleming Island to give him nothing on that so one. If third down. Island, I would consider taking a timeout here. By our count, it looks like Fleming Island has two timeouts left. And so they maybe want to take one here, keep one in their pocket if they get a stop. Definitely going to see a timeout here if they get a stop on third down. Wallace takes a snap, drops. He's got pressure, throws it over the middle to Foy. That's a first down and more. Foy's into the open field across the 30 to the 25. They're going to get him down that to about the 22-yard line. That'll stop the clock with 49 seconds to go. And Oakleaf is rolling. So uh, running back gets lost there on the screen pass. Normally, if you're in man coverage against the running back and they're rolling off to the right, that's a good indication that he might be getting the ball on a throwback or a screen or some other play action to the left. Knights go tempo. Give to Foy again. They get him this time. He's going to drive the legs and keep rolling. And he gets down across the 10-yard line, 37 seconds and counting. Oakleaf has not elected to stop. It looks like they're going to stop the clock here, but that's going to be due to a helmet coming off. And number six, Arian Witt, loses his lid, and then he gets replaced. That'll stop the clock temporarily. Stop it at 37 seconds. Their most effective two-minute offense is still handing the ball right up the middle. Why not? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Knights, they give it to Wallace. Now he calls his own number, comes around the edge. That's a touchdown, Oakleaf. Brandon Wallace calls his own number and puts six more on the board for the Oakleaf Knights. And the student section's going crazy. The crowd's back into this game. It's a phenomenal atmosphere here. Uh, in Orange Park, what a fantastic time here. This is great. 28 seconds to go in the first half. Oakleaf capitalizes on the turnover on downs. Fleming Island will get a chance here to see if they can put some magic on the board before they go in at halftime. 
Andrew McDavid for the extra point. Snap, good hold, kick is up, nearly blocked, but it is good. Oakleaf has put 10 on the board, unanswered. Actually, I stand corrected, it's 14 unanswered. 17 to seven now, 28 seconds to go. We'll keep it locked here. Well, this version of the Golden Eagles offense as compared to uh, in years past is prepared for these kind of situations. They have a team that can come from behind and throw the ball effectively, but Sebastian's got to get the ball out of his hands rhythmically, rhythmically and methodically to be able to uh, generate more, especially early in the downs. Like they're not getting effective first and second down plays and they're catching themselves in third and long. Right. And that's definitely why you're going to see them. And th this is a Fleming Island team that, unfortunately, historically has not played well behind the sticks. David, Devon Boykin and Bernie will be deep, but I don't think they're going to get this ball. I imagine this is going to go squib again. Yeah, if I was them, I would uh, stay deep until right before the kick and kind of rush it up a little bit. Coming up at the halftime break here, we'll... Watch Eagle Band 1 and give some halftime analysis here of this pretty good ball game here in district play. And that's a high end over end kick. Looks like we're going to get another up back catch. And here comes a good run here. He's across the 40 yard line. Some good field position here. All right, so now that you've held on to your timeouts here, you might have a small opportunity to set up for a field goal and make this a one-score game. I imagine you get to maybe about the 30 or 25-yard line at the most. That'll set up Sertiman to put three on the board here. That was Aiden Prostemski with the kickoff return. Kind of jumped in front of Devon Boykin there. I'm not sure there was some miscommunication on it, but it turned out to be a pretty good run here. So they'll set up right at the 40-yard line. If you can get to about the 27-yard line set up for a 45-yard uh, field goal, that probably is the extent of the range of uh, most high school kickers. I would imagine so. Sertiman does have a decent leg, though. Four wideouts for Fleming Island. And we have a timeout by Oakleaf. They're going to take a defensive timeout now that they've seen what they need to see, and they'll discuss it. So, David, what are you going to do in this situation if you're Chad Parker? You've got... Ball on the 40-yard line. You got 60 yards of all, 60 yards of the field to go. You would only need maybe 40 of that if you want to get a decent field goal range. You got a couple of timeouts and 22 ticks of the clock. Well, frankly, the offense has played poorly. There's only one player right now that looks dynamic in the open field, and that's going to be Boykin. That's the only guy that looks like he's uh, going to have the ability to shake a defender and go. And uh, if you can get him the ball and say a quick hitch pick up another easy 15 yards, call a timeout, hit one more to the sideline, all of a sudden you're looking at a, uh, a one big play away from a field goal opportunity, that's what you got to do. And if you can't get it to Boykin, then I think the next best option is to try to throw to the perimeter on, say, a quick out or a deep out. Well, we'll see what the Golden Eagles cook up here. This kind of feels like the fourth quarter of this game, honestly. It's kind of where we're at right now situationally, but still have a whole half to play here. And again, great crowd out tonight and a good showing by the uh, visitor section over there across midfield from us. Oh, absolutely, but that whole stadium is packed there. That empty section to the left over there is actually the band who's preparing to play. Eagle One is gonna come and play halftime. So they'll come back out with four wide receivers. They'll move everybody to the right side of Broughton. Worm will marshal his troops out there. Get a snap. Drop back. Pressure on the outside. And Broughton gets out of it somehow and then tries to throw the chest pass. I don't know if he should have just kept on running and maybe just a couple of yards to stop the clock out of bounds. But nonetheless, 17 seconds and second down. So uh, I don't know about that lookout block there. Was that supposed to be for a screen play, or how did they get so quick into the backfield? I wonder if that was some sort of window dressing to set up for something over the middle, but it didn't look like it worked either way, and Broughton was running for his life. Now, you have two incredibly deep safeties. You could split them pretty easily right here. Line it up again on second and 10. Broughton gets a snap. They'll fake. More pressure. He steps up into the pocket. Scrambles out of it somehow. Looking to throw. Has a man over the middle. Caught. That's a first down. Tyler Beverly gets the first down. They got to call timeout. timeout. You know, and there's a late flag. Six seconds left on, that left on that play clock. They called it about, you know, he got down at eight. I think they called it at six. They're going to call an ineligible man downfield 
on Fleming Island, and that's going to pretty much bring this drive to an end yeah, with four seconds left. And need that this out. Don't do something stupid here. You're more likely to do something stupid and get scored on here than you are to actually score, in my opinion. And that was because of the scramble at this point. Fleming Island's offensive line didn't hold their water and ended up too far downfield. Going to call the penalty on Braden Cunningham, the senior. That's an FAU commit. That's tough. Offensive line execution in this game has been poor so far. It's, that's probably the weak point of the Golden Eagles right now. So uh, they've got to get to the locker room, see how things go, adjust, and uh, have a different game plan at half. Absolutely. Four seconds to go here. I imagine just going to see a heave-ho. Oakleaf coaching staff wants the clock to run, and it does. And they're going to... Just run the ball up the middle between the tackles, and here comes Tyler Beverly. And oh, if he didn't get tripped up there, he might have been gone. And and that'll do it for the first half of play. Oakleaf 17, Fleming Island 7. We'll take time out, and we come back. We'll break down this first half for you. You're watching Friday Night Lights on FSB. First Baptist Church of Orange Park was founded in 1921. Suffice to say, much has changed in Orange Park, Clay County, and the world since then. Though much has changed in the world, our mission remains the same. We are a church intent on fulfilling that mission and are strategically engaged in our community through partnerships with local schools, sports teams, veterans organizations, and more. We are a family equipping church. We invite you to check us out at firstfam.org or join us in person at 1140 Kingsley Avenue, Orange Park, Florida. Through their strategic IT talent placement practice, Altier Integrated Services leverages their top-tier network and proven talent acquisition process to efficiently support your organization by augmenting its talent resources. Altier provides institutions the talent to achieve competitive advantages through digital transformation and modernization. IT executives are faced with continued challenges around cost optimization and innovative activities. Altier has a proven track record of providing services anchored in driving the agile AT enterprise of the future. For more information about Altier Integrated Services, go to altairtek.com. Everyone from the time you walk into the door to every part of the process that has been done, when you come in, they're solely taking care of you. Thanks to New Teeth Now, I'm just going to be honest with you, I feel good. Happy wife, happy life. <laughs> yeah. No more gun disease, no more teeth falling out, no more self-doubt. You feel better, you look better, and it's a better way of life. Halftime here at the castle, they call it, Oakleaf High School in Orange Park, Florida. Just a stone's throw from the Duval County line here. BP alongside David Wells. And we're so happy you're joining us tonight for this rather exciting football game between district rivals. Last year, this game went to 26 to 20 and Oakleaf took the finish. Tonight, still a 10 point ball game. It's not out of reach for Fleming Island, but like you said, David, they gotta make some adjustments on the offensive line. Well, you take this one double, it's 34, 14. That's a blowout. Yeah. So, you know, you got to struggle to uh, execute on defense. You know, your, your special teams is doing pretty well. And then your offense is playing poorly for Fleming Island. You know, there's too much uh, interior run game for, or, uh, for uh, Oakleaf, and there's not enough vertical attack passing for Fleming Island. You know, two things that they needed to stress in this game was being able to make big plays on offense and stop this methodical offense for, uh, for Oakleaf on defense. Well, and the other thing, too, Sebastian Broughton does not look as crisp as he needs to be tonight. He looks like he's struggling a little bit and not making the reads that he normally makes. What's, the, what's funny about that is that the one touchdown pass he's got was his best read of the night. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That was where he uh, had the ability to find one of his better players, and then the yards after catch is what really happened there. It was a quick screen tunnel to, uh, uh, to Beverly, and he was able to take it for the distance. Absolutely. So Eagle Band 1 coming on the field for halftime entertainment. It's always a pleasure to see them out on the field tonight. And again, what a crowd this evening for Friday night football here on FSB. We are so happy that you have joined us tonight. And if we get a minute here, let's uh, take a look around the area to see what other ball games are taking place. I uh, know there's uh, already some hot district matchups. Most of the area is getting into district play. And um, let's take a look at the scores here in uh, just a second. 
But uh, this game right here was marked as the Jaguars prep game of the week. Uh, a couple of the local news stations called this their game of the week and uh, all sorts of stuff right now. And Dave, you got some scores for us. So scores tonight, we got Atlantic Coast is being uh, hammered by Mandarin 30 to nothing. That one's into the third quarter. Nice and Fletcher are in a scoreless contest at the moment. Bishop Kenny's playing Bishop Moore. Bishop Moore with a slight lead, 7 to nothing at home. Uh, Baker County, Baldwin 0-0 at the half. Terry Parker 10, Ed White 22. So Ed White's having a pretty solid start to their season. Uh, the Riverside Generals are tied with the first, co the first coast, 14 to 14. A little surprise in the first coast to be uh, behind and, uh, or to be so close, uh, close in that contest. Uh, Reigns playing uh, the mainland Buccaneers. Reigns is losing 0 to 14. Middleburg is getting hammered from uh, bon uh, Pontevedra Beach, 28 to nothing. It's in Pontevedra. Uh, Fernandina Beach is up 26 uh, on their traveling visitors. Uh, the uh, St. Augustine Yellow Jackets, one of the better teams in the area, is up 21 to six over Menendez. Um, the East Side Rams are losing to Bradford, 14 to zero. Uh, we have an excellent game between Trinity Christian and Bowles tonight. Bowles is currently up 14 to six. That one's about to go to half. Paxson and Stanton in the uh, Nerd Bowl, the uh, Battle oh, of the Magnet Schools. Battle of the Nerds. That's, 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 that's our Ivy League Nerd Bowl here. Paxson leading that game 14-0. Uh, to zip. Uh, Dave's alma mater, Episcopal, taking on West Nassau. That's got no score. Uh, Mount Dora Christian and Duval Char or Charter, no poor, uh, score reported. Uh, Orange Park on the road in Melbourne tonight. They don't have a score on that one yet. Uh, Jackson at Spruce Creek tonight. Old Plant Christian taking on Countryside. Eagles View at St. Joe. Uh, North Florida Educational Institute, uh, Fleming Island's opponent last week uh, on the road tonight and a couple of other games. Creekside, and this is a district game too. This is something we want to watch. Buholtz hosting Creekside right now. It's 28-6, to Creekside in a hole right there. And uh, Gainesville uh, at Clay tonight, the Purple Hurricane uh, down six to the Blue Devils. That's a 20-14 to score, and that will take care of some of your games in the region of note. And we're going to be keeping an eye on that Buholtz-Creekside game too because that is a critical game in district uh, – play yeah, here. Bue holds up 28-6. to six. That's one of the better teams in this district for sure. Last year they had a kid named Creed Whittemore who's now a starter at Mississippi State uh, as their starting quarterback and he's an excellent guy with a lot of uh, a lot of moxie to him as well. He's a slot receiver for them now and was uh, an excellent quarterback for them but they have to replace him and other offensive talent and it looks like they still, uh, still got the juice. Absolutely. So a lot of good stuff going on uh, in the area tonight and uh, Looking ahead to uh, some of the other games uh, around in the bigger leagues, if you will. Uh, we've got a huge matchup in the Swamp tomorrow. Very important game for Billy Napier's Gators as they host Tennessee in their annual rivalry. Uh, Florida State goes on the road to very soggy Boston College uh, to take on a noon kickoff right up there, which is never, never great. I, I don't like noon kickoffs well, even, at all. Even but with all that distance, even going all the way up north, they're 29-point uh, favorites. And I'll be on the sideline there for that uh, Tennessee and Gainesville game. Absolutely. And, of course, Dave does some great scouting uh, for the Shrine Bowl and uh, always gives us some good looks at where our high school athletes may be potentially heading. Uh, but then, then, of course, this Sunday uh, here at the bank, you've got a very important matchup between the Kansas City Chiefs defending Super Bowl champions coming off the loss at Detroit. And they're going down to play Jacksonville, who's uh, looking for a little revenge after that uh, playoff loss. So uh, Trevor Lawrence has looked good so far. He looked great in preseason. That first game was very sharp as well. Uh, there were a couple things to clean up as far as fumbling and, uh, and turnovers. But if they can do that, they have a chance against the world champs. And, you know, uh, the defending world champs in Kansas City, they're coming off a loss with uh, Detroit. And that was a hard-fought game kind of right down to the end there. But they're going to have to cover better and in my opinion, I think Jacksonville has better weapons than Detroit did. Yeah, that, that's true. Uh, and the, the uh, other big thing that, uh, you know, a lost weapon in Travis Kelsey, who has been pretty much day-to-day -day throughout the last week or so, and uh, but they did back up the Brinks truck for Chris Jones. And, and, and you're a Kansas City fan, aren't you? Yes. Oh, well, look at this. You want to put a little side action on this? Uh, yeah, well, you're going to the game. I, I'm going to sit at home and say curse words. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I, I, you know, I, I had the opportunity to to go to a preseason game in Jacksonville, and I'm like, ah, I think I'll pass. I might say something that most fans might not like. <laughs> That's for sure. Well, with that said, let's catch our breath here. We've got about nine and a half minutes on the clock here in the half. Enjoy Eagle Band One here at Oakleaf High School, and we'll get back to live action in just a couple of minutes. You're watching Friday Night Lights here on FSB.
the sights and sounds of Oakleaf High School Golden Regiment as we bring halftime to a close here at Oakleaf High School. 17 to seven, our ball game at the half here. BP alongside David Wells. We'll resume live coverage of tonight's ball game in just a couple of minutes, but we've had a couple of pretty good band performances tonight as some of Clay County's finest takes the field to showcase their musical talents. It's just nice to see everybody get involved on a Friday night. You know, it brings the whole community together. Uh, when you have the band out, you know, the band family comes as well, packs out the stands. Uh, gets a couple more burgers on the grill for the concession stand too, so. We have know. not smelled that tonight. I, oh, I, I, what's going to rival the rock? I'm, I'm disappointed that I haven't catched, uh, haven't catched, cap, caught a waft. I know words are hard. But <laughs> well, it's, face, it's facing the opposite direction over there, isn't it? Yeah, and we've had the breeze blowing towards us, so I, I haven't caught anything delicious. But I did see on the menu on the way over that they did have pulled pork out there. So. Oh, the, the concession stands that pull pork just go to another level, especially yes. when they throw those oh, yeah. on the concession stand nachos. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's different. That's some of the best. Well, we're uh, likely going to bring that to a close here as they, they've brought out the three-minute warm-up period for both teams. Although they might just take this down to the wire here, but well, all the technology that I see out in some of these bands nowadays. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at what looks like computer monitors out here. I mean, they're, they're, I guess the, there's one guy on the team who's a DJ of some sorts. Oh, do you you DJ? You DJ in the band now? I, I mean, he's got. I mean, I'm seeing two Dell monitors right next to each other right there. Yeah, that's that. Guy, that goes to a different level there. Yeah, that's. And he's doing the Bob thing like everybody else is, so he's involved. Yeah, he's, yeah he's, he's definitely keeping time with everybody else. So, Again, fantastic atmosphere tonight here at the Castle. We'll take in some more of the sights and sounds here, and uh, we'll get back to football in just a few minutes on FSB. Stay with us. Almost time for action to resume here at Oak Leaf. Clear the field off. Everybody's stretch and warm up is completed to get the bands off the field and around to their spots, and we'll resume this contest. Well, stretch and warm up. The normally Fleming Island gets to throw some routes on air there. They took the band all the way down to uh, to zeros on the clock, so they need to get this thing going and on schedule. But you know, I don't think Fleming Island's. You know, back and prepped and ready for game action to start this thing off. No. Maybe well, a little gains and shift from the team that's just going to run it up the middle all game. Well, and that's something that I know I was mentioning to uh, Director Ray Canaveri here for a second is that we got to have this uh, run game taken care of for Oak Leaf because Fleming Island has not been doing a really good job stopping them. But we'll see. Christian Foy, we don't have uh, statistics on him so far, but I imagine. He has gotten double-digit carries 
and maybe getting close to, if not exceeded, 100 yards rushing tonight. Has well, Christopher how Boyd. far can you push him? Are you going to just ride him into this? Because you have more games next week as well. And this is a long high school football season. The kid's only a junior, too. So uh, he's definitely the focal point of their attack. But I saw him huffing and puffing at the end of that first half. we got to see how he does to finish this thing out. Yeah, that's something I wondered, too, is whether or not you're, he's going to be able to go the distance at this point. Now, if they keep getting these 10, 15-yard gains, that's just going to motivate the kid to run harder at that point. That's not going to stop him. But if they, they start getting some quality tackles and limit his gains a little bit, they may wear himself out there. So we'll and good see. teams run the ball in the fourth quarter when you know it's coming. Right. Well, 17-7, here's our score. Andrew McDavid will line up to send this out. And the law offices of Boykin and Bernie are back deep for Love Fleming that. Island. Looks like everybody's moved up a little bit here, too. They've moved the upbacks up a bit, and they are now have their toes in the five. They are definitely expecting a squib, which has been the order of the night. And they're going to just kind of punch this one out. That one I would just let roll out of bounds, and that's exactly what they do. So they're going to get the procedure penalty for the kickoff out of bounds and get the benefit of the field position, which is good. I guess if you look at it from Oakleaf's perspective, you don't want to give it to those skilled players. Yeah, that's only that's what I think is their only chance to lose this game is athletically on the edge. They might have uh, inferior tackles compared to superior wide receivers. So as long as they're able to put pressure on Sebastian Broughton and prevent those big plays with perimeter, probably going to come away with the win here. Let's see if the athletes have gotten a little juice in their step here and if they can make a few plays. They definitely will need it if they want to come out of here with a victory. Very important for Fleming Island to set the tone in the district. Last year, a goose egg in district play. You don't want to resume that losing streak. Oh, it's the most important games of the year. Not only do you circle them because of, uh, for playoff reasons, but for pride reasons too. Yeah, because these are teams that you're going to face pretty much every year. Since the district realignment took place and we've gone to the suburban and metro side, you know, we've gotten into a tough district. Fleming Island will start it off, and Broughton will keep it himself. Takes the read, finds a block, spin move, hits the circle button, gets about two and a half, maybe three yards on the play. And, I mean, you're going to see these kids in other sports, too. If they're, like, your local area high schools in Clay and Orange Park and Oakleaf and any of these other sports, you play baseball, basketball, you're going to see these kids, too. And the last thing you want to say is, hey, didn't I cover you when we played football? I'm going to shut you down with this one, too. Right. <laughs> and the beat goes on. Give him about a four-yard gain, second down and six. Broughton taking the zone read on his own last play. Three wide outs again. Broughton get a snap. Give it over the middle. Good blocking and a first down run for Beverly this time. Nice physical tackle. Number four for uh, Oakleaf. That'd be uh, uh, Dijon Brown. I thought he made an excellent play there from his safety position. Came down and sunk down on that running back. Absolutely need to get Tyler Beverly running downhill. Now, it looks like the Tyler Beverly show. We don't know what's going on with Demir Jackson, but Tyler Beverly's taking the bulk of the carries except for one nice run from Nate Newman. Newman will line up in the backfield with Broughton as a sidecar. Give it to the mullet, man. Expect him to be a threat to run a little power in the place of Jackson, and that may be what the scheme is tonight without Jackson in the ball game. Again, no word on his status. Gets a snap, fakes it, and here comes the big man, and the bulldozer pushes the pile and then they'll push him back. They'll stop his forward progress after about a three and a half, maybe a four yard gain, just shy of the 50 yard line, stop him at 49. And that's kind of what I expected would happen on that play. Hey, it's, it's physicality, it's trying to wear him down. If you're gonna have a, a 10 play drive, you gotta have some, uh, some extra pounds to carry the football. Again, Fleming Island's best interest right now to keep their offense on the field as long as possible. And they need to get points on the board. Single high safety, nice one-on-one -on -one look to the top of the screen with uh, with Boykin. Let's see if they recognize it here. They give both receivers a pretty good cushion. Broughton takes a snap, puts a foot in the ground, runs around his blocker, spins around, and they will fumble, fumble, fumble football. football. And we'll see. We got a recovery here. And they're going to mark that down right on the spot. They say Fleming Island either recovered or it might have gone out of bounds. Now, I saw that thing get kicked. And if you kick the ball forward as an offensive unit, you have to go back to the spot of the fumble. Right. I'm not sure. Let's get the uh, replay here. 
And it looks like Broughton flat dropped the ball and then it got squirted out and I couldn't see if there was a foot on that or not. So they get it third down and manageable across the 49 yard line of Oakleaf. And again, very difficult to see where that actually went, but Fleming Island stays alive. Broughton gets a snap, give right over the middle. Beverly will push the pile forward. He'll get a first down, get a little bit more, get a shove. And the Golden Eagles move the six yet again, stop him at the 40-yard line. Now, I question the strategic advantage here of having two receivers on the line of scrimmage on the same side of the ball, making one of them ineligible. That's, again, another formation they rolled out here. Uh, I would assume that means you should put your opposite side receiver in motion. You should be some window dressing. There should be some screen plays. But it's very predictable after you do that, you're going to run an interior run. Yeah, so I, I'm not sure what the, what the gamesmanship is here, but again, they're going to line up with those receivers right on the line yet again. And now we get a timeout on the field, and that's Fleming Island's first timeout of the half. Yeah, I don't know what the game plan was rolling into this one, but it seems a little different than it has been in weeks past. Uh, I believe he had plenty of time to throw the ball in that very first drive, but now it just seems to be getting less and less and less. So they'll take the timeout with eight minutes and 50 seconds to go in the third quarter. Not quite to the mandatory water break yet. About two minutes to go for that, and we'll keep it locked right here. And, and I'm not really sure what the, what the window dressing's all about tonight. This is not a scheme that I'm used to seeing from this Golden Eagle offense. You know, I know we know Chad Parker's got a couple of tricks up his sleeve, but I'm not really sure if that's working the way he wants it to. But what, is, what is building off of the plays that he's currently run? You've seen... Uh, a couple zone reads that have uh, that he's trying to throw behind. You see a couple uh, interior run games that are not really built for play action, and you don't really have a whole lot of screen game. You have one screen go early in the game, and that was the biggest play of the day, a 60-yard touchdown. Yeah, so whatever's trying to coalesce here, we haven't really seen it, at least not from our vantage point. But, but nonetheless, first down at the 40-yard line of Oakleaf. And crowd still very much in this game. Not a whole lot of empty seats even after the halftime break. And uh, number four, Dejon Brown, is going to have to sit, sit this one out with a wardrobe malfunction. I believe he has something with his jersey that needed to be fixed and wasn't fixed in time for the referee's liking. The referee stops the game for something. He needs to pull you out of the game. Yep, so they'll, they'll make the switch right there. It looks like they're just going to go ahead and make another substitution as well. And that's, that's uh, the one man comes off, two men come on. Uh, interesting. Well, that seems to be the second. All right, we're good. They're good. They're good. Second wardrobe malfunction that's been called. And now Oakleaf is going to take a timeout because they have personnel issues. So that will be their first charge timeout of the half. The coaches love that as their, their favorite thing. And by loving that, I mean you're running gassers at the end. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, the, they, they, to no end, appreciate not having the right personnel on the field, especially on special teams. Yeah. And if you have two of the same penalty in the same game, especially non-football-related penalties. Yes, dead ball procedure penalties. And that's, that goes back to one of my keys of the game, especially for Fleming Island. But now it seems that Oakleaf is starting to make some silly mistakes here. No bonehead penalties. I haven't seen a lot of them tonight. But we all also have seen a couple of interesting holding penalties, some that were called and some that were not. But again, we're stuck here at 8.50 to go. Fleming Island driving. If you're just joining us, they've got the ball at the 39-yard line of Oakleaf after a couple of first down runs. Oakleaf opened this up in the second quarter with a couple of brilliant plays. Fleming Island had their touchdown on a Devon Boykin scamper over the middle. Brandon Wallace has run for a touchdown tonight. And he's also thrown a touchdown pass to Michael Connor, the exciting freshman for Oakleaf. I would expect those two defensive ends for Oakleaf to come after the quarterback pretty hard here. It's going to be a pretty obvious passing down situation almost every second down for the rest of the game. The lineup in double sidecar here. And it looks like from the angle that we have, it might be Boykin in the backfield alongside with Beverly. Broughton gets a snap. They'll fake it. Broughton will step up, sees the pressure, finds it, hurls it over the line of scrimmage. What a catch. And that is Calvin Johnson. We call him Baby Megatron. 
He lays out and gets a great catch. You know, whether you use your hands or your body, as long as you catch it, right? You know, a, a coaching points in the future is going to be to use your hands and turn and run. But, you know, at that point, you just needed a completion to get Sebastian Broughton on the right track. And that was a great catch. This receiver sacrificing his body there to make that play. And they'll resume here. Postemski comes across the formation in motion. I'd like to see Postemski get involved here a little bit. He's been used mostly as a blocker so far. Broughton will get a snap, and he will fake the option and then trip and fall. And that's the... The turf monster tackling him on that one. He tried to plant a foot and then took up a huge divot. Yeah, he's getting obviously frustrated with the footing here. Uh, I don't think you carry extra cleats as a high school football player, but the, the traction in this one's kind of tough. And one of the best things that Sebastian does is redirection, is planting his foot and using his lateral agility to make defenders miss and get extra yards. So if you take that out of his game, uh, you're, you're in for a long day. Try to run maybe a speed option on that play. and. Turns out to be a one-yard loss. Second down and about 11 here inside the 20-yard line. This is Fleming Island's first trip into the red zone. They'll fake the give, and then he'll step up into the pocket. Looking, he's got a man open, and he chunks it over the middle, and that's incomplete. Boykin was off to the side, flailing his hands, maybe get a couple of yards out of it. Broughton decides to go over the middle. Two underneath receivers there that were pretty significantly open and not a big pass rush there. He... He rushed himself. His internal clock told him, hey, I got to get out of this pocket. I got to scramble. I got to run. Yeah, no one's anywhere near you, man. Just see your easy completion, find your guy, and throw it. I thought Calvin Johnson was pretty wide open on that play. Take what the defense gives you at seven and a half minutes to go, 7.32 to go in this third quarter. Fleming Island driving. They've taken up just about half of the quarter with the football. Time of possession playing to their favor now. We got a snap, quick throw, get that slant, and Postemski. With a catch, he'll get about a six, seven yard gain there. That'd be just short of the first down marker by about three, four yards. Well, you had the feeling they were gonna go for it on fourth down anyway. Now they're actually gonna send the field goal unit out. Now you're, you're definitely in Sertivan's range at this point. And, and, and any points are good. And this is a makeable field goal for bringing Sertivan. It, bringing it to a one score game if this goes through. Yeah. So I think this is a wise call by the Fleming Island coaching staff to Get sort of an out there, trot him up, see if they can put a triple on the board. Hopefully he's the left hash guy. They've had the ball for most of this third quarter. This would be a field goal of just a little over 30 yards. Hold is down, kick is up, that is no good. We got a, a piece of that sucker when it came out of the, uh, the holder's hands there. I don't think it was necessarily the best hold there, and a kicker line drive it. So that's a stop for Oakleaf with 6.41 to go. And they'll take over first down. But promising, though, there were some completions that could settle down Sebastian. Sebastian could put up 20 points in a quarter if he wanted to. So uh, if he gets his rhythm going, if he knows that he's the best passer on the field, then there's a chance they can come back in this game. Well, and it's unfortunate that you've got no points on the board there, but that's the drive you want if you're Fleming Island. You want to keep this offense off the field. You want to keep Foy from running all over you at this point. So I, I think that is something you can hang your hat on and build on into the rest of the game. You need to get a stop here, though, if you want to try to do that again. First and 10 for Brandon Wallace's offense here on the 20-yard line after the stop. Spread the formation. Wallace will get the snap, gives it to Foy. Tried to tackle him high. That's not successful. You need to get him down low, and he'll get about five yards. And if you're going to try to tackle this guy at the shoulders, you're just asking to carry him for five more yards. Oh, absolutely. He's a Mack truck out there, and he runs the same play over and over again, but with high levels of efficiency. Yeah, so I'm surprised there's not been a conversation about fundamental tackling at this point. If you're going to wrap him up from behind even, wrap him up around the waist and start pulling back. This is where that time in the weight room makes a lot of sense. But he gets five yards, second and five. I've got an six interesting minutes. wrinkle of new modern high school football. There's a plasma screen television down there at uh, underneath a couple tents, and they have a huddle system in which they can see the plays live in during games, which is kind of neat so you can make in-game adjustments. All those technolog technological things coming in. Wallace by himself will run an option, runs into an offensive lineman, scampers around, and then falls. He might have lost a yard. Actually going to say he got back to the line of scrimmage for no game, and that play didn't develop the way the Knights wanted to. Well, you got to rally to the ball here, and even though uh, even though Smith is a little bit smaller of a defender, he's got to step up and tackle these bigger backs. So with 5.38 to go here, we'll take the mandatory water break here. Let's take a timeout with him. Your score, 17 to 7 right now. Oakleaf with the ball. We'll be back in just a few minutes here on FSB. 
The United Soccer Alliance is a full-service soccer club for all ages. The United Soccer Alliance will train your child with professionally licensed coaches. And make sure you check out the United Sports Alliance's flag football program. For more information about soccer and the flag football program, go to unitedsocceralliance.org. Florida Sports Broadcasting is your home for live local sports in Florida. Florida Sports Broadcasting covers sports year-round and brings you the action live with play-by-play so you don't miss a moment of the action. Broaden gets the snap, steps, Go again. he's going to throw it again. it again. He's got a receiver, that's going to be a penalty. Oh, they hit a flood and a great touchdown. touchdown! It's a touchdown! 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 Make sure you like FSB on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. And for more information, go to floridasportsbroadcasting.com. Back here at Oakleaf High School here. Knights driving after the Fleming Island missed field goal attempt. 5.38 to go here in the third quarter in a 17-7 game. Scamper the receiver around. Wallace will carry it himself, and then he'll get stuck. Oh. What a hit, and that's so exactly. Three different big hits. That's exactly what you're looking for if you're Fleming Island. That's a stop, and that's going to force Oak Leaf's first punt of the afternoon, evening. I think Aaron Witt's played an excellent game so far today. You're calling his name uh, left and right, whether it's in, in coverage as a, a dropping linebacker, whether it's in run support. You know, the guy has a tough task here uh, as a uh, – a smaller junior player, but, you know, he's long, he's athletic, and uh, he's really getting low now trying to finish this game out. Knights get a player on late. That's number 19, Zach Michelle, or Michael. Fleming Island tosses a player off, and then back deep, they have two returners deep for Fleming Island. Snap away, punt, a little bit of a whirly bird spiral. Sebastian Cruz that's over his head. And then he'll pick it up. We'll have Boykin as a blocker in front of him. Cruz crosses the 45. Scampers loose, gets to about the 47-yard line, and that's where Fleming Island will take over on offense after a 19-yard return. That's a shame there. That was great, excellent blocking. It would have been a significantly better return there. Uh, you got to catch that ball and run with it. You could have had an excellent play and a, a, a dynamic change of momentum there. So, you know, one of the things I've always stressed to uh, punt and kick returners, a little bit of coaching of punt and kick returners, you have to make sure you identify the rush and you decide in the first two steps of your drop back. One step, two step. Am I catching this ball? Am I letting it go? Am I calling for a catch? As soon as you do that, you commit to it and you go. Yeah. Well, no harm, no foul, just an exchange of possessions there. Fleming Island got the stop they were looking for. Now let's see if they can make some adjustments and capitalize downfield in a 10-point deficit. Broughton will trot again in good field position. Takes the snap, fakes the give, throws over the middle. That's caught. There's Boykin, Ooh. stick, and he will run for another two or three yards. And, boy, they stopped him cold, and he still had some momentum going. That, that takes a little bit of mental toughness to hang on to that. You know you're coming across the middle of the field. You see pre-snap there's a safety sitting right where you're about to be. You know you're going to take a shot. You catch it. You take it. You hold on the ball. It's a first down. Great run by Devon Boykin there after the catch, the sprinting slant. Broughton gets his troops up to the line, and they'll get ready to go again. Take a snap. They'll fake that give. No, they're going to give it to Beverly, and then he gets pummeled by the Oak Leaf defense. Nothing doing on that run. So there is a little bit of athleticism needed for inside zone. You need to double up the defender and be able to get to that second level, or else those linebackers run free and make plays. There on that play, there was a double on the interior defensive lineman, and no one was quick enough or uh, long enough to be able to reach out and touch that. Very, uh, very productive inside backer, Neil White. Spot the ball after a yard gain. Second and nine. Broughton will get a snap. Give it to Beverly. Nice big hole right there. Tyler Beverly. Whoa. Upsy daisy and he gets another eight yard gain or so. I'll give a little to uh, number 56 there, Joey Couch. He pulled on that play, got a nice block at the second level. So we've been made to understand by James Critch, our FSB insider, that Braden Cunningham was moved to center this evening. Now believe that he may have been lined up at tackle and so a, a change at center so this he, evening. he has the ability to do both he's likely going to play tackle at the next level but he's playing center here tonight he's also the long snapper as well yes so we want to thank James for pitching in and giving us that report from the sidelines 
Beverly goes out in motion. He'll get a fake. Broughton will move for the first down. That was designed to do the, just that, a little bit of a quarterback draw, and that's a first down. Now one of the most frustrating things for a fan base is knowing that you have his receivers covered, but the quarterback being so athletic just enough to get the first down. It's a demoralizing thing, and it takes the win right out of the crowd. Under three minutes to go here in the third quarter. Clock stopped temporarily, but has now started after the first down. Yeah, one thing I can tell, there's a lot more cell phones out. You can see a lot more cell phones. That means the crowd's getting a lot quieter. <laughs> we get a snap. Beverly will get it over the middle again. He'll scamper for another couple of yards. He'll get it about four, maybe five, to just across the 20-yard line. Spotted about the 18. No, actually going to spot it right at the 20. Give him three or four on that one. Second down. Now they're rotating in fresh bodies in that defensive line, so they're, they're uh, bigger, stronger, and likely are prepared for this goal line situation. Fleming Island doing what they need to do right now to keep Wallace and the Knights' offense off. He'll put a foot in the ground, come around. Looks like it was going to set the edge. He'll scramble around and get hit. Gets back to about the line of scrimmage, and that was it. Broughton. That's Justin Marshmency there. He's one of those two edge rushers that we keep highlighting. He's an athletic dude that has size, length, and speed to get off the ball. So he saw that uh, this is likely going to be a read option play. He stuck his own foot in the ground and beat Sebastian Broughton to the sideline. Jackie Shepard on the play as well with the assist. Third down and six for the Golden Eagles. Still in relative field goal range for Sertivan on the other hash this time, but... Golden Eagles want a first down here, try to keep this drive alive. Boykin goes in motion, looking like he's faking a jet. They're going to run an end around here, and here he comes. Sticks a foot in the ground. That's a first down, and he's going to get outside. I was waiting for the trickeration. You got a week off and three weeks off. Where are the trick plays coming from? There's a reverse. Trace, go. Trace Verney coming from the opposite side of the formation. Puts a foot in the ground, gets a 15-yard chunk, and that's a first down. And we have a downed night on the play as oh. training staff is hustling over across the field. And we'll take a quick uh, stoppage of play here, 143 to go. And they'll tend to the injured player. And I can't. Looks like it looks it's like actually it's a, a Fleming Island player. Uh, it'll be number three. That's, uh, that's Trace Bernie. That's Trace Bernie. I'll tell you what, we'll take a quick timeout while they tend to Bernie and get an update if we can right here on FSB. Stay right here. Are you looking for a place to get connected, find community, support, or purpose? If the answer is yes, River Christian Church is the place for you. In addition to Thursday night and Sunday morning services, RCC offers many other support groups, provisions, an active youth group, and events for all ages. RCC loves to be available and to be a blessing to their community. River Christian Church is located at 5900 U.S. Highway 17. Stop by, give them a call, or visit their website and let them show you how they can be a blessing to you. Mr. Chubby's Wings are more than just wings with a great food and beverage selection. Mr. Chubby's is the home of the original Fleming Island Happy Hour, Monday through Friday, 4 to 7 p.m. You can catch all your favorite sporting events on the numerous TVs, including all Fleming Island football games on FSB. Before or after the game, Mr. Chubby's has you covered, and they're only eight-tenths of a mile from the Fleming Island High School campus. You can order online at MrChubby'sWings.com or call 904-272-WINGS. And while you're at it, let Mr. Chubby's cater your next event. Call 904-272-WINGS. James Critch, our FSB insider. Boy, he is Johnny on the spot. And uh, he said that that is cramping for Tyler Beverly. So it doesn't look like it's a serious injury. I am definitely have. We have our FSB insider here. You know, it's a close game. Every little bit of information we can get up here in the booth, we love. Give that man a microphone and put him on the sidelines, but just hope it's not raining when that happens. So Tyler, uh, sorry, Trace Bernie gets the first down, cramps up, comes out, and it's first and goal for the Golden Eagles. And here we go. That oh, looks like so oh, come on. I didn't even get a chance to get it out of my mouth. Yeah, I knew you were going to say screaming eagle. That's exactly what that formation this is was. This we can't have nice things. Ugh. Back it up five yards, and we'll try that one more time. Jeez, guys. I'm so I, I excited. I don't think you should. At this point, like, you know, you have plenty of space to operate as a passing offense, which is kind of your strong suit. If you go four plays here and run it and don't get it, that's not – that's you tight. Need, need to get it. So they're, they're going to stay there. Screaming Egon, that's a oh. bad snap in the 
Tsunami gets worse. First and goal from all the way back to the 26 yard line now. Well, my play, uh, my play calling ex expertise is not particularly fancy, but I have heard the thing, don't make something worse. Yes. And when you get behind the sticks, you, you try to get away from the fancy. And that's outside of your traditional offense. I, I don't really agree with the call, but you know what? They've, they've got plans for these things. You know, you have a third and down sheet. You have a third down and 10 plus sheet. Well, it's uh, brought back in at quarterback now, approaching the minute mark here in the third quarter. It's second and goal from all the way back at the 25 yard line. Broughton will look, take the snap. They'll fake. He'll step up into the pocket, finds a hole to run through, and there he goes. The man says, Swim, what a move. And Sebastian Broughton is inside the five. That's a touchdown. And they're going to flag. There's a flag on the play. Touchdown is signaled, but we're going to see what the call is. That's in the area of a block in the back or hold. Well, at any rate, it's downfield. The down will likely count. We'll bring up third and goal. We'll see what the call is here. But that I would imagine the down wouldn't count, wouldn't it? If they accept the pen. Well, yeah, that's a good point. Again, you never can tell with high school football these days. Yeah, we turn around and all of a sudden a 15-yard face mask is not a first down. Yeah. So it is a spot foul and replay second down. So, okay. So it is a spot foul, but uh, they actually – that turns out – to be a little bit of a gain there. They ended up getting about 10 yards even with the holding penalty. Broughton scored the touchdown, but they send it back. Put All right, it on the now 16 you're, yard you're line. in a situation where uh, Boykin's gonna be one-on-one. -on -one. I think you should hit him with a taste of their own medicine. They did a slot fade to you when they had single high or cover zero. You have Boykin in the slot. You should do the same thing to them right here. That corner of the end zone is gonna be wide open for it. See what the Golden Eagles dial up here with 41 seconds to go in the third quarter. This is, <laughs> is going to get exciting here, folks. Don't turn off this game. Broughton is going to roll it and speed option at the outside. Bernie, or Beverly rather, gets out only gets a couple of yards on the play. I'm not sure what that play was designed to do. but And Sebastian Broughton is clearly frustrated. Normally you see him in a cool, calm, collected demeanor. You know, he's tapping up his teammates. Maybe he'll get upset with you if you cause a penalty or something. He, he is just fired up right now. He's going after everyone and anything. Needs to kind of dial that in, rein it in a little bit. And, and we've got too many people on the field here. And Oakleaf just got away with that one. And that's Touchdown. a strike, and oh. he didn't catch that at all. That was the one he wanted, but he was falling down. Didn't get the throw high enough. And that's going to bring up fourth down. So Sebastian Broughton is not particularly the best on the run thrower, especially when you want him to throw against his body at full momentum. Uh, he is a drop back passer who has the ability to run, not a runner who can also pass. Does that make any sense? That absolutely, absolutely does. He is not a Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes. Or can Joe, throw it from a ridiculous arm yeah, slot moving at full speed. Not a Joe Burrow kind of guy, basically. So now they're going to bring Parker Sertiman out to try to do another field goal here to see if they can get this between a 10-point game. Fleming Island has held the ball for most of the third quarter. They get that to about, they called it a 28-yard field goal. Last one, he didn't get a really good snap and hold. Now this one, they look like they're going to go field goal block safe, so there's not going to be as much of a rush here. Maybe just go ahead and see if he can kick it and get the points on the board. And he kicks it, and he looks like he shanked it. He missed it. And he did. So, again, another Fleming Island field goal attempt. That's six points off the board. Oakleaf with another stop, 27 seconds to go. Fleming Kickers. Island yeah, Fleming Island, trying to make something happen, but penalties, again, bonehead penalties, keeping Oakleaf in this uh, lead right now. Otherwise, we have a completely different complexion. That's a tough one to swallow. That's a tough one to swallow. You drive all the way down the field. You look like you're having a good drive. All of a sudden, one penalty leads to two. Two penalties keep you out of the end zone. You miss a kick, and all of a sudden, the game changes. I, I the think, whole aspect of it's different. I think if you're Fleming Island's coaching staff, though, you need to get the offensive unit together and really start driving this point home. We're moving the ball on these guys. We're controlling it and keeping the time of possession in our favor. We've just got to get into pay dirt. They've got to score touchdowns. Put your foot on the gas. Throw it deep. Yeah, at some point. Wallace back in action at the 20-yard line. Last time, Oakleaf had their drive stall. Get a snap. Here comes Foy. 
And they actually grab his legs this time and run into a minimal game. He'll get about five. And you can get him limited to about five yards in a cloud of dust. And that will make a big difference down the stretch because well, you want to force them into a fourth down situation where they're going to be tempted to go for it. If you stop them there, you get great field position. No scoring taking place in this uh, quarter right now. Oakley's just content to let the clock run out here. And we'll go into the final frame, 17 to seven. Oakleaf with the ball and the lead. Fleming Island set a couple of shots and has come up empty. Let's see if they can make some adjustments. You're watching Friday Night Lights on FSB. We'll be back in just a moment. Baptist Church of Orange Park was founded in 1921. Suffice to say, much has changed in Orange Park, Clay County, and the world since then. Though much has changed in the world, our mission remains the same. We are a church intent on fulfilling that mission and are strategically engaged in our community through partnerships with local schools, sports teams, veterans organizations, and more. We are a family equipping church. We invite you to check us out at firstfam.org or join us in person at 1140 Kingsley Avenue. Orange Park. Through their strategic IT talent placement practice, Altier Integrated Services leverages their top tier network and proven talent acquisition process to efficiently support your organization by augmenting its talent resources. Altier provides institutions the talent to achieve competitive advantages through digital transformation and modernization. IT executives are faced with continued. Welcome back. And boy, they do. They do a pretty good job here at Oak Leaf. Oh, absolutely. This crowd is absolutely bonkers. The, uh, the song choice, the atmosphere, it's like a DJ booth in here. Really good game so far on FSB, an opening district game for both teams. Oak Leaf with a 10-point lead, trying to see if they can add on to it. Fleming Island's done a pretty good job of staying in the game, but has come up empty in the scoring department. Last quarter of play here, very important for this Golden Eagle defense to get another stop to see if they can... Stick one in the end zone. Give it to Foy again. Great tackling. That's Rodgers. That's that sophomore again. The kid needs to put on a little bit of weight, but, man, does he have talent. This is the part that we were kind of questioning whether or not if Oakleaf was going to continue that downhill running. Fleming Island sticks for another loss. Gets him in a third and manageable, but this is exactly where you want to be if they're the Golden Eagles. Let's see if they can get a third down stop here, force Oakleaf to punt. So one a schematic change that... Uh, that Fleming Island's done is uh, Nate Van Hoff is playing more defensive end, defensive tackle than he is that stand-up outside backer. I think that they're running out of bodies in that interior portion of the defensive line. They need him to play that kind of role. Third down and about six to go here. Wallace will have that spread formation. Passing down on this one. Wallace will throw over the top, and that's going to get one-on-one -on -one coverage. Excellent and play by Murray. Oh, I didn't think that was penalty at all. Oh, my goodness. The flags keep coming in for Takori Allen. What did he grab? Did he grab an arm? Did he grab jersey? Jackie Shepard was the intended receiver on that play, and Fleming Island. Looking at the replay, that's a pretty questionable call there. And let's see that right there. And I don't know. That looked like really good coverage to me, So, but nonetheless, kind of hard. And I'm not sure they 15-yard uh, penalty, penalty moving forward. And I don't know if we got a timeout there or not. But, but nonetheless, first down, Oakleaf. 11.04 to go in the ball game. I think you got a sideline warning. That's their first. Got it. Couldn't, couldn't hear what he said there. Well, they'll spot the ball at the 39-yard line. Again, that spread formation, not as wide as it has been. Yeah, you know what's coming here. I don't even know why there's a safety deep. I think the safety is just kind of watching for that over-the-top read as they, they did give up that one. And here comes Foy, and again, another good tackle. And that's exactly what you need to do if you're Fleming Island. you got to put him in space. And Foy kind of... There's Ladarius Jackson with a nice tackle there. Squeeze the line of scrimmage. Make sure they have to bounce it to the outside. If they have to bounce it to the outside, you have a corner and a safety in uh, Sebastian Cruz that can make that tackle. Foy kind of uh, slow to get up there. Didn't exactly sprint back to the huddle there. Sauntered was more like it. You get him about a three-yard gain there. Ten and a half minutes to go in the ball game. Three wide receivers to the left of the formation. 
Wallace will take a shotgun snap. That was a little low. He had to grab that one real quick, but nobody playing there. And Wallace just takes off. Ooh. A little friendly fire there on Sebastian Cruz. I bet that one hurt. He got his bell rung by his own teammate. Wallace had to scoop that up out of the dirt and then ended up with a great scramble. Yeah, Cruz got his bell rung. That's not the first time he's gotten his bell rung. Oakleaf into Fleming Island territory. First down. Ball sitting at the 42-yard line. You're going to have to find a way to squeeze this line of scrimmage. They're going to try to test you again. They, uh, they outweigh these defensive tackles by, you know, 40 or 50 pounds. Wallace content to take his time, get as much clock off as he can. Oh. And now we have a flag here. And they're going to call offsides. A little, little movement to incite I, movement. I highly doubt that's the last of those you see. You're, yeah. They're going to hit that early and often with the hard count. Well, at this point, you want, want the ball to continue to move as well as the clock. Oakley content to kind of sit on a 10-point lead here. I'm surprised they're not attacking a little more. But I guess they... Well, they want to chew. They want to chew that clock down to nothing. Figure they don't want to give Fleming Island any more opportunities to get here. down there. Yeah. 9.45 and counting to go here in the fourth quarter. If you have two drives like this, this game's over. Wallace will get a snap. He'll fake the throw. Rolls out of the pocket, over the top. And that is incomplete. They're going to call the penalty. So that is, and a that second is, penalty. Although he did not get to the receiver early, in high school football there's a thing called face guarding, which is the same thing as pass interference. You have to turn and look for the football. That a second flag that came out late. But they're going to call pass interference on Fleming Island, another 15-yard penalty, and that's the part of Oakleaf trying to take it over the top. And they had that that look one-on-one. -on -one. Fleming Island able to defend it, but hadn't been able to do so without a penalty. Well, frankly, if they had scored there, I would consider that better for the Fleming Eagle team because they need every second of this clock they can get. Right, with 9:29 to go, even if, if they burn this down to inside of six minutes and score, this game will be over. So, 15-yard penalty and another first down. Move the ball to the 22-yard line with 9.29 to go. Take a snap. Wallace had to dig another one out of the dirt. Foy running into open field and then tackled. And another flag on the play. And they're going to call an illegal shift on Oakleaf. Didn't get everybody in motion set uh, in their formation here. 9.20. One and clock stops there. The back it up five. First time Oakleaf has been behind the sticks at a significant margin all night. Let's see if the Golden Eagles can take advantage of that on first and long. Wallace brings the troops out again. Let's see if we get another dose of Foy over the middle. Checks the sideline. Yeah, it definitely looks like the uh, Eagles are keeping two safeties deep just in case they want to take a shot here. Oakleaf will go over the middle to give it to Foy, and that safety coverage needed to bump up and help. Foy's going to run. He'll get tackled to the 10-yard line. It's pick your poison at this point. If they don't load the box, they're going to run it. If they load the box, they might go over the top. That'll be first and goal for the Oakleaf Knights, and they are in command at this point. It, it, it's a tough double-edged sword there. If you don't load the box here, you're probably going to lose from death by a 1,000 punches. Spot the ball at the 9-yard line. Approaching nine minutes to play. And Oakley's definitely taking their time here, trying to burn that clock. See if they can punch it into the end zone and pad the lead. Wallace gets a snap. Foy gets it up the middle, comes around the edge, breaks a couple of tackles, and touchdown Oakleaf as he gets just across the plane. That's a big one. We're going to have to go in full two-minute mode every second for the rest of this game. Fleming Island unable to stop 
the powerful Christopher Foy. Extra point coming with 8.37 to go. And this crowd has entered it, uh, is energized, it's in it, it knows how big that touchdown was. It's just got to finish out this game. Not quite over yet. It's still only a two possession game with 8.37 to go and a couple of timeouts. Still plenty of time. Fleming Island does have to move with some urgency. Snap, hold, kick, up, good. And your new score with 8.37 to go in the fourth. Oak Leaf 24, Fleming Island 7. Let's take a quick commercial break and when we come back, we'll get some more of this action right here on FSB. Stay right here with us. Through their strategic IT talent placement practice, Altier Integrated Services leverages their top tier network and proven talent acquisition process to efficiently support your organization by augmenting its talent resources. Altier provides institutions the talent to achieve competitive advantages through digital transformation and modernization. IT executives are faced with continued challenges around cost optimization and innovative activities. Altier has a proven track record of providing services anchored in driving the agile IT enterprise of the future. For more information about Altier Integrated Services, go to altairtek.com. Back here live at the castle, Oakleaf up 24 to seven on Fleming Island, 8.37 to go. BP alongside David Wells and our entire FSB team happy with us tonight for what has turned out to be a fantastic ball game here. Kick is up, and this is gonna be an actual return and kind of a stutter step, and then he was down at the 30 yard line. No deposit, no return. Ouch, that one looked like it hurt. Devon Boykin tried to get up a full head of steam and he did not. So the initial word we're hearing right now is Trace Burney's back out onto the field, but he is walking off quite gingerly. And Chad Parker's got his offense huddled up. They need something huge, and they need it fast. They haven't tested the, uh, the vertical portion of the field, the deep area of the field, since the first quarter when they targeted Calvin Johnson deep down the sideline, and you missed by less than a yard of accuracy from Sebastian Broughton. If you get him to calm down, just throw the ball accurately and down the field, the windows are there. And if you're Fleming, you need to get down here, score, try to hold Oakleaf with some time on the clock, get back down here and try to tie this game back up or take a lead. Do not see Trace Burney on the field. Now he may have been too shaken up here. Take a snap. They'll give, play fake, Broughton throws, caught. That's Postemski, and that's a first down. One pass, one first down, give it about a 12, maybe 13 yard gain. Fleming Island's going tempo. And as well they should, get a play in, get a play in. Yeah, okay. you're down 17 here, you gotta find a way to uh, manufacture possessions, even steal one if you can. Oakleaf changing personnel here as Fleming Island marches to the line of scrimmage. Broughton takes a snap, fakes, pump fake, with a man in his face, throws it over the middle, caught Pastemski oh, with a what great a catch. catch. What a grab. That crosses the 40 yard line to about the 38. Fleming Island moving on two full two minute mode now. Oakley's got to hurry up and get back. Pastemski with a huge catch. Yeah, don't count him out just yet. Ball spotted at the 39 yard line. Brought All right, home. you got Boykin in the slot here. Uh, defender is significantly slower than he is. You got your slot fade to the right. Oh. Boykin will come around. They'll fake. Got a man pressure in the backfield. Broughton will throw. He's going to go over the top. He's got Postemski. No, mm, just Postemski a little long. Postemski took a bad step there. He didn't read the ball properly, and that could have been a touchdown pass there. Oh, I thought he was open. I thought the throw was actually pretty good there, too. He just took a bad step and missed it. Good coverage by Oakleaf and just the right throw. It's a little far. Yeah, Paskemsey looks like on the replay here, it took a bit of a step too far. And that was a wide open pitch and catch that he just missed. 7.40 to go here. Fleming Island driving in Oakleaf territory at the 39. We get a snap, quick look, throws under pressure, throws it underneath to Beverly. Beverly with a big shoulder. And then he'll get out of bounds. 
you, you need to see the nasty there. You need to see the nasty. Number 71, Stephen Franklin there. He missed his block, but then stood straight up after it was over. You really want to drive that defender into the sideline, win, lose, or draw. You know, you only got one of these. You only have so many snaps of high school football left. Make sure you take every single one that you can. Three-yard gain on that play. Third and seven now for the Golden Eagles. Broughton still got pressured, comes out of the pocket, gets a throw, and that's going to be tipped, and it's a tip drill, and Boykin can't get underneath it, and that's going to bring up fourth down. A wise play there, number 12, you know, slapping the ball away. He was probably going to lose that one-on-one -on -one, uh, one -on -one second tip jump ball, and wisely just slaps it out of, out of uh, Boykin's hands. Jackie Shepard on the coverage. Also on the coverage was 28, Jonathan Broughton. So Sebastian Broughton with fourth down and about seven. Gotta, gotta go for it at this point. You're not gonna get any extra possessions being conservative on fourth down here. So gotta move the sticks. If they can't do that, this game will likely start slipping out of reach. Get a snap here. Pressure coming. Big man on the run. Broughton scrambles away. Throws across his body. This is gonna go into the end zone and that's incomplete. And there's a flag on the play. And that came kind of late, and it's behind the play, and I wonder if there's going to be some sort of... Is there a little extracurricular activity? Is there rough on the passer? It could be a number of different things, most of which are likely an automatic first down. <laughs> so we have the call here, and it looks like this is going to be on Fleming Island. All right, that'll be a first down for Oakleaf, and this one is likely decided. So, yeah, blindside block, and again, the penalty that even if they had scored on that play would have pulled it back. 6.46 to go. I had to sidestep a uh, cell phone that just came flying by. <laughs> Incoming. That'll, that'll come up later at Mr. Chubby's. Uh, for <laughs> first and 10, Oakley. It's fun in the press box, it really is. Gets the people going. Absolutely. I needed it, it was like a, a shock of the system. Yes. Speaking of shock of the system, Nate Van Hoff playing his uh, desired position, outside linebacker, coming in to rush the, uh, squeeze the line of scrimmage here. I wish he was rushing the passer. He's a pretty effective pass rusher. But you're not gonna have any of that here late in the game. It's gonna be downhill all the way. Fleming Island desperately needs a turnover of some sort if they wanna Come back in this game. Foy keeping running. He's going to move the pile. Oh, number 77 for uh, Oakleaf. He is driving the pile. That was a phenomenal play there. That was a five yard run that turned into a four yard shove and a That's nine a yard gain. Corey Ambrose, that was an excellent play by a senior offensive lineman for them. He dug, it, dug out there, uh, kept his pad level low. Uh, flattened out his back and drove that pile. So an extra couple of yards there uh, goes in Foy's stat column, but it really is for number 77, uh, for some number 77 quarry. Good gain on first down there. Exactly what Oakleaf needed to do to keep the clock moving. We are approaching the point where we'd get that mandatory water break here at the halfway point. That's a bobbled oh, snap, and that is not good. Oh, and, and that was a dive, and that could have been a huge game changer. Excellent diving effort by a senior in Sebastian Cruz. You like to see him still playing hard, even though this one is close to decided. You know, he wanted to change the tides of this game. Way to good, good effort out there. We'll take our timeout here at 5.50 to go, our final water break of the game. When we come back, we'll have the conclusion of this game. You're watching Friday Night Lights on FSB. We'll be back in just a moment. Everyone from the time you walk into the door to every part of the process that has been done. When you come in, they're solely taking care of you. Thanks to New Teeth Now, I'm just going to be honest with you, I feel good. Happy wife, happy life. <laughs> yeah. No more gun disease, no more teeth falling out, no more self-doubt. You feel better, you look better, and it's a better way of life. Welcome back here to Oakleaf High School with 5.50 to go in the ball game. Oakleaf in a commanding 24-7 lead and the ball 
want to remind you that uh, next week's broadcast will be on the road with Fleming Island as they travel down to Titusville for a road trip. It's always fun to take the show on the road, and we'll be down there in Central Florida. That is next week, September 22nd. We hope you'll join us here on Florida Sports Broadcasting. Oakleaf will push the pile there, and we have a penalty and a false start, and that's going to back it up five yeah. yards, and the Oakleaf coaching staff not thrilled with that at all. They jumped the gun there. You know, it's a shotgun-based oh, offense, so going under center is not usually in their forte. You know, it's a two-part cadence. It's set hut. And if you're hearing set hut from 10 feet away, yeah, as opposed versus to versus a foot away, you know, it feels different as an offensive lineman, and yeah. you jump. So that makes it third and six, 546 to go here. Golden Eagles need a stop. They want to try to stay in this game. I imagine if Oakleaf gets another first down or two, they can just run the clock at will. Oh, yeah, th this sucker's going to get down inside of, uh, likely inside of four minutes, even if they don't get this first down. Wallace will get a snap. He'll ride it out to Foy and slip past a couple of tacklers, and then that brings up fourth down. Just short. Oakleaf player is kind of signaling that he wanted a late hit here, but Knights will bring out the special teams unit. Damage is done, though. Clock under 520 in just a few. Every time I hear this song playing, I now think of Florida State. I don't think of LSU. LSU is kind of the one that plays this song the most, but after those two games at Camping World Stadium over two seasons, I now attribute this to FSU. Well, good, good. They're, they're a good team. They're looking solid this year. Uh, excellent quarterback play, a tight end that's pretty good, and absolute stars out there at wide receiver. That Keon Coleman is something else. What a great oh, find in the portal. Fantastic he, I, was it really that difficult of a find? He could have gone to LSU and ends up going to Florida State. Kid played basketball for the university. Cruz is letting that one go. That's going to get inside. And, uh, yeah, inside the 15-yard uh, line there, we got distracted by college football. But uh, I'm always distracted by college football. Of course. It just happens. Well, that's not exactly what you wanted to do if you're Fleming Island. It kind of went to maybe Cruz to try to return that for a couple of yards, but... 4.38 to go, and, you know, David Wells, we've seen stranger things happen on these broadcasts, and we've seen stranger things happen with this offense, but the question I have right now is, is Trace Burney too shaken up to make one of those magical plays like he did in the Mandarin game last season? Well, even if he's not too shaken up, are you willing to continue to take shots downfield? I mean, some of these things, you just needed a little bit more air under it, or you needed to throw it a second earlier. It's a lot of hero ball involved in this, but what else are you going to do? All right. See, Sebastian Broughton's got a kind of neon green towel with him right now. It's not something I've seen him have for most of the game. I'm wondering if he's got damp hands on the field. Broughton will take a snap, cuts up the middle, and he is gone. Puts a foot in the ground, wiggles his way around, still on his feet. Sebastian Broughton shoves a guy with a stiff arm, comes to the 50, to the 45, to the 40, to the 35, to the 30, to the 20, to the... Oh, he's out of bounds right there. That was a great job of avoiding a horse collar tackle, and Sebastian Broughton said, excuse me, I'm not done yet. That was a little bit of a revenge tackle there by number two. He got a very violent stiff arm to the face there and then still ended up chasing down Sebastian Broughton. Nothing so. like a palm heel to the face, but yeah, then he came back and... are still getting after it. Came back and chased him. But excellent run by Sebastian Broughton. He saw his lane and had to take it. You know, he's taken out some of his frustrations uh, with a violent, angry run. Yard, that's what they need. It's 72 yards. Give Fleming Island good field position now in the red zone. Broughton gives it to Beverly. Beverly with a powerful run over the middle. It'll cross the 10-yard line. Oh, push tempo, push tempo, push tempo. If you're going to do this, you got to do this full force. got to do it quickly, yes. You, you can run the ball at will at this point There's if you're going to no give it to you. It. you got to full it if you know what I mean. Oakleaf changing to some of their bigger personnel to see if they can jam the run game at this point. Broughton will line up. He'll take a snap. Beverly gets it again, plows through, kind of moving tacklers, comes around the edge. Beverly around the corner, got a block, 3-2-1. Touchdown, Fleming Island. All right, quick drive, didn't take too much time off the clock. You got 341 left in a two-score game. Not exactly how Oakleaf wanted to maybe finish this game, but uh, now it's within nine, or 11, rather. 341, Parker Sertivan will come on for the extra point. 45, Parker Sertivan on the That is exactly what you wanted to do if you're the Golden Eagles, is get that quick score, and now you got to try to get the ball back. Now here's the question, though. Are you going to try the onside kick? 
Uh, I mean, I know, I, have to. I, yes. know I know it's so, I know it's kind of it's always a low percentage play, but uh, there will be a percentage of actually getting it. So regardless, you're going to have to try it. Uh, and if you don't get it, you have a possibility to stop them. If you stop them and score, you will try it again. Sertivan's kick is good. The score, 341. Oak Leaf 24, Fleming Island with a spark, 14. We'll keep it right here. You see those two missed field goals are ending up being huge right now. If they had either of those two field goals, this would be a one possession game. Yeah, that, that's six point swing right there. And all of the work they did in the third quarter to try to stay in the game is now turned into desperation type plays. But again, Sebastian Broughton with some tough running, taking the game on his shoulders, trying to see if he can keep his team in it. So it's a frustrating game, offense, defense, and special teams for the Golden Eagles. They still have a chance here, but you know, it's, it's a hope and a prayer. At this point, yes. Well, let's see what trick Parker Sertivan has up his sleeve. Oakleaf is not lining up for onside, though. They, they are not yeah, up here. They have a man deep, and they're not aware of the film that Fleming has. Fleming it does a nice little squib right up the middle with the kicker. And I'm trying to look at the, uh, the kick team for Fleming, and I'm not seeing a whole lot of hands players that I recognize immediately. We'll see what they've got here. 341 to go. If you end up giving the ball to Oakleaf on a standard kickoff, you got to get a stop on defense. A three and out is what you need. And they kick it onside, and that nice is hands. good hands on that one. Be number 13, uh, Jackie Shepard. Now, actually, we've had some, oh, confu had some confusion on that one. Maybe, Jackie maybe they said it's Jackie Shepard. Did he change jerseys, perhaps? Because he's been number 12 all night. I thought he was number 12. He's been what number 12 all night. <laughs> Whatever. Either way, that was great hands. And now Oakleaf will have a chance to run this out. Good by, job, 13. By my count, it looks like Fleming Island does have two timeouts in the pocket. They'll need to use them. All right, can't let them have a first down here. Got to use these first downs. Foy will get that carry, and they actually hold him to just about two yards. No timeout signaled yet. Uh, I think that's a mistake. I would use it. Yeah, I would use a timeout right away here. If not, you, you need to do it on third down because they're going to milk this under three minutes. This is a mistake. Well, they are going to take every last second off this play clock here. Can never put it back on, man. Can never put it back on. And you can't take the timeouts with you, so you might as well use them. Second down, and now we have flags on the play. Oh, that's actually pretty huge. That might stop the clock. That will stop the clock because that looks like a procedure penalty, and that's exactly what it is. That's big. All right, never mind. And now they're going to move behind the six, and now they kind of get a bonus timeout, which is not what Oakleaf wanted. Oh, we'll take it. Yeah, you'll take that for sure. 3.05, and the clock will continue to run. Oh, it shouldn't. You, would you reset the play clock and let it run? That's not how that works. Well, nonetheless, they back it up. Fake it to Foy. Wallace will put a foot in the ground and run around. Then he'll just grab by the jersey, and that's the best-case scenario. And, and do we have a timeout? And I think we do. And they'll take their second charge timeout, and that's the smart thing to do with 2.47 to go. And now it is third down. And... Oh, I'm sorry, second down in, well, I've lost track of the downs. Anyway, the down marker says second. Now, now they are marking it third. Okay, so I was right. Remember that crazy game last year that had five downs? Yes, and I went back and saw that, and there were five Still downs in that play. Going to give a shout out. I know he's not watching the game presently, but he's down in southwest Florida. Happy birthday to my boy, Shoeless Joe Anderson. He's an old man still. 40, Happy birthday. 40, 43. He's probably singing Jimmy Buffett karaoke all night in memory of the master of Margaritaville. Well, I hope he's got a cold one in his hands. I'm sure he does. Shout out to our friend Scott and Carrie down there as well, helping him celebrate. And to Joe's wife, uh, Crystal, I apologize in advance for what you have to deal with tonight. <laughs> uh, you got to think that Fleming should put a bigger body in here. There, there's not enough mass out here to... Uh, stop this interior run game. You're going to get possibly one here 
for uh, a run up the middle, and maybe if they get it close enough, they'll go four on fourth down and put the game away. Well, if you get a stop here on third down, short of the sticks, you expect Fleming Island's going to take a timeout immediately. That'll burn their last timeout, but it'll keep plenty of time on the clock. Oakleaf Oakley gets a first down. It's pretty much lock, stock, and barrel. It's over with. We'll see what happens here on third and about seven. Ball sitting at the 44-yard line. Oakleaf will take Wallace. He'll roll them around. They can't quite set the edge, and then they're going to get him to out step bounds. out. But he did Does get he a get first, first down. He did look like to get a first down. So Oakleaf gets the first down, but the clock stops. Well, that won't particularly matter here, you know, in the, the game of two possessions. That, that makes it tremendously more difficult. You know, you're going to wind this one down inside of a minute, likely if Fleming Islands to get the ball at all. Uh, this, that's a deciding blow in the game. Officials have taken a timeout to measure. Oakley fans have been quite entertaining tonight in front of us because they uh, pretty much see it kind of the way we do, and I'm pretty sure this is a first down, but I guess they're going to measure the spot here. And if you're Chad Parker's team, you need to get a stop immediately. You need to start stripping the ball. Oh, but you, if you get a first down here, this one's, this one's decided. Yeah. This one's pretty much over. Go ahead and wrap it up. Well, here comes the measurement. It's either going to be first down and ball game or fourth down and oh, got to get a push. Those chains look a little taut already. Pretty much. Oh. That is short. They're calling them short. By just a few inches. So that's fourth down. And they're, of course, they're going to keep the offense on the field. This is the biggest play of the game right here. Now, if you're the Oakleaf Knights, you need to stay disciplined and move this ball a few inches and not five yards backwards. Uh, I'm pretty sure everybody just said to each other, don't jump. So I don't know if they're actually going to run a play here. Yeah, everybody hold your breath. And you're bringing in offensive linemen in here. Somebody's going to jump on defense if you call a hard count. I hope they're prepared for this one. Got a whistle on the uh, near side here. I mean, if I was if I was them, this is what I would do. If I was Oakleaf, I would hard count it no matter what. And then if you don't jump, you just take the delay of game and you punt it. Did he call timeout? I think we have a, a timeout called by the Oakleaf bench. What I'm saying is if you give <coughs> if you give Fleming here the ball, it, it is likely going to be bad for you. I mean, it, it just, you're giving a plus field position. If you just take the, the hard count here, punt it away, then you at least try to pin him inside the 10-yard line. If you get the first down here, you likely win, but it's not a guarantee either. And they've taken a timeout. So Oakleaf has been charged with a timeout. Coaching staff is flailing their hands at this point. They don't want to see this. He ran this. out of bounds anyway, so the timeout really doesn't matter. Right. But I'm not sure what all the confusion's about here, so. What I'm not confused about, Mr. Chubby's Wings. No, I'm not. Mr. Chubby's Wings, the home of the Fleming Island Happy Hour, and it's one of our popular spots to hang out after every ball game. We want to thank Vito and his staff over there, and everybody who's watching tonight's game over at Mr. Chubby's. We appreciate you for supporting high school athletics here in Clay County. We'll uh, shout out and have a, a sandwich and a cold beverage with you maybe a little later tonight depending upon how quickly we can get out of here <laughs> all in all though this is the the game that you wanted if you're Oakleaf after coming off a two-week lag and if you're Fleming Island you're kind of wondering well we blew out somebody last uh, last game out but uh, it's not really showing here oh, you had three uh, fantastic offensive outings if you count the preseason classic as yeah. well like uh, this was by far the most disappointing offensive output that they've had. And there is more season to play, but this is not a good yeah. sign for the uh, Fleming Island faithful. And it's a shame that this is going to be a, a f potentially a fifth straight district loss for Fleming Island. Fourth down and a few inches here. They're going to snap this back to Wallace. Wallace is going to get a first down, and that might do it. All right, that'll be game there. They're going to start winding down the clock here. They need to get one first down, and it's over. Pretty Don't much. Fleming has any timeouts left, correct? No, Fleming Island has one timeout by my count here. And if that was the timeout to take, probably it should have been there. But 
But Oakleaf is going to go ahead and, yeah, and you're right, they get a first down here. This game is pretty much done. Even in a two-possession game, it's uh, quite a bit. And even if not, you're getting this thing way inside of a minute. Yeah, you're right. The two possessions is a killer. And again, those two missed field goals, critical. Not converting deep drives into points. Let's see what they dial up here. Foy with Wallace, and they'll give it to Foy. And they'll get a good stop there, about two yards. You have to assume it's getting close to the 30 carry mark. Pretty much, he has been the, been the workhorse for this Fleming Island uh, defense to, to deal with. Uh, Oakleaf has really leaned on him. And I mean, and he's built for it too. He's got a strong lower half and uh, he runs with like, turning his legs, getting those extra yards. And if he breaks through the open field, he lays a hammer down with all that momentum. Under 140 to play here. Wallace will take the, his time getting a play in and then they will milk every last second. Under 90 seconds to play here. Oakleaf will likely move to 2-0 and on this one, 1-0 and in district play. Foy will get the snap, and he'll run into the open field, and uh, that might be another first down, maybe just shy. And they're going to give him first down yardage, and that is going to be it. Well, if you're Fleming Island, you walk away from this one vastly disappointed in your offensive performance, and again, you're another disappointment in district play. Well, the district loss is a big one. You know, those those add up quickly, and they feel like they count for double. So uh, in the grand scheme of things, you're not out of it. You know, it's a competitive league, and we've seen crazier things happen, especially two years ago. Yeah, but Absolutely. You know, so the, the, the things that come down to high school football is how do you adjust, how do you make mistakes, and how do you uh, get back up when you get knocked down. Right. Oakleaf will line up in victory formation here. And, and if you're looking at this from the Golden Eagles' perspective, you know, they were in this game for quite a bit. Until Oakleaf managed to score in the third quarter, you know, it was one of those situations where, you know, you were in it, but your kicking game didn't come through for you. You didn't get touchdowns. You hadn't scored, but they called back on penalties. And so those are the things that Chad Parker in his first year will have to get his squad back in. And it's full steam ahead. And you got a long road trip against Titusville next week. You got to come back and win that game out of district and get back on the winning side. But still, so far, to go through three games and be two and one is uh, not bad for the Golden Eagles. And again, Oakleaf will continue their win streak. And that will wind down the last couple of seconds here, and this game is in the books. So our final score, Oakleaf 24, Fleming Island 14. And that's how the Clay County Game of the Week goes. What a ball game. David Wells, some final thoughts. Well, it's a tough day. It's a, it's a long week after you've just had so much time off. But uh, hit that reset button, get ready to play a uh, big road game. Absolutely. So, And again, to remind you, next week we will be on the road in Titusville as Fleming Island travels down to Central Florida to visit. And uh, we'll be there for you as well with pregame coverage and kickoff at 7 o'clock. For David Wells, our producer, Cobus Gomes, Director Ray Canaveri and our entire FSB team, we appreciate you tuning in tonight to the Clay County Game of the Week and Friday Night Lights on FSB. Until next week, so long, everyone. Thanks for watching high school football on Florida Sports Broadcasting. Make sure you like Florida Sports Broadcasting on all the social media platforms. Make sure you join us next Friday night as Fleming Island travels to Titusville. Tonight's game has been brought to you by... The Clay County Tourism Department. Mr. Chubby's Wings. The First Baptist Church of Orange Park. New Teeth Now. The RCC Church. And the United Soccer Alliance.